What's going on? This is Bunny Muffins. Today I'm going to show you how to get to Diamond by showing you six games of playing Flex. So we'll be covering a lot of different compositions, some Fast 8, some Fast 9, some Reroll, and everything in between. They will also be at every single rank starting from Iron. So we'll have one game there, one in Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, then finally Diamond. These games will also include both Lucky and Unlucky games so you'll know how to deal with every situation. We've all been in those games where we don't quite get the items that we want or the augments that we want for our specific composition, and hopefully this should help you guys manage that. It should take about three hours. You don't have to watch it all in one go. You could do just one here, just one there, maybe play a game yourself in between. But without further ado, let's just get right into it, starting at game one in Iron. So over here, we have the start with the glove, and then we also get a Negatron Cloak. Not the best starting items. Uh, I always have, if I had to think of the worst starting items in the game, in terms of like a three item combination, it would probably be a Negatron Cloak, a Belt, and a Glove. Because all the items they build are really situational, and we actually get that right now. So I'm not going to slam a Quicksilver Sash in the beginning, I'm not going to slam a Trap Claw, and I'm not going to slam a Zephyr in the beginning either. Uh, so with that in mind, we can't win streak, right? Or we could, but it's going to be difficult to. So you probably don't want true twos. True twos is really good if you have a buildable item, uh, but we just don't have that here. Heroic Presence is for Guardians. Don't really have many Guardians, so we're kind of forced to take Clear Mind. So we're going to have to play a little weirdly this game because Clear Mind makes it so that you gain experience if you have no units on your bench. So we're going to go ahead and start that off right here. And if you guys are just joining, you may have noticed like maybe... The iron game isn't for me, maybe you're already in gold. You, you, you could go ahead and skip ahead, or you could stay and watch all of them because I'm obviously still going to be playing at like a higher level at each of these games, but maybe the opponents are a little bit easier so you know how to adjust your play style based on that. Uh, but here, clear mind, we have to clear our bench. And whenever you do this, or whenever you get this augment, you want to have a bunch of duplicate units on your board. So in this game right now, I'm blocking it by accident, but we have two Nasuses there. And the reason why you want to do that over, say, playing like a Nasus and a Leona is because you need to get two starred units or upgraded units. And to do that, you need three copies of the unit. Normally, you use your bench to hold those units, but normally you use your bench to hold those units. But in this game, we can't really do that because that's like our augment. So <laughs> we're kind of like out of luck there. So instead, you use your board to hold all your units. Uh, but in this specific case, Nasus isn't that great. So we just sell him, play the Diana instead to get a stronger board. But let's say we did have an item. Let's say we had a Static Shiv and we had a Parakaisis. We definitely would want to hold on to that uh, because she could one, use the item, and two, uh, she's a stronger unit than Nasus, so we would want to hold her instead. Uh, this other player we're facing, he's running, I believe that one is called Scorch or Tantrum. It's one of the ones for Rage Wing, but we're able to get a quick win there. And so we are lose-win in terms of our streak right now, so we don't really have any streak going on quite yet. Next shop, we see a Zippy. Do we want that? Probably Volibear over the Nasus. It's three Dragon Manster, which isn't like a cutoff for that trait, but it's still nice to have. Maybe we just randomly hit the Karma or set later on. So this guy has better together. He's running Astrals. He's got a pretty good start. He's got a lot of upgrades, and he's level 5. Holy cow. He has the same item combination as me though. It's like the the anti-Exodia. You just don't want these at the start of the game. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you get them. You just want to lose streak with it because you just cannot win uh, the early game in stage two with them. So we take a loss here. Again, our streak kind of got ruined because the guy we faced in the second round was very weak, but it's not the end of the world. In terms of items here, we could almost go in any direction. We could go for completing a tank item, we could maybe change something into a hybrid item. For example, we could pick up a rod to build a ionic spark. Uh, we could pick up a belt for warmogs, pick up a chain vest to build either gargoyle stone plate or sunfire cape. We could get a tier for protector's vow or redemption. Could also grab a sword, build something like a Zeke's or an IE. So almost any item combination can work here, especially since our team is not solidified yet we don't 100 percent know what type of comp we're going so we want to keep it somewhat flexible so here like i could itemize a lee sin um, and i'm doing that right now but i think this is actually a mistake i probably should have built a morello nomicon put it on kaisa 
because that item can fit in a bunch of different comps or build an ionic spark instead. So building jeweled gauntlet, definitely a mistake here. And I will say guys, uh, in these games we're about to review, there will be mistakes. Whenever you review any game of TFT, there are going to be a ton of mistakes. Uh, the amount just depends on, I guess, how good you are, because uh, the better player theoretically should make less mistakes in their games. But that doesn't mean you can improve on every little bit, and in these games in particular, they were at the start of the set, so I may or may not have been multitasking a lot of times. Uh, but that's besides the point. In every one of your games, if you want to actually win, you should be 100% focused. Uh, but you may notice I am skipping around a bit, because I am... because I was kind of doing other things when um when I'm playing TFT sometimes or recording these like sometimes I'm watching a TV show on my second monitor sometimes I'm even playing a second game on my <laughs> on my second monitor it really depends on what I'm doing that day but again for the purpose of this video learning and reviewing the games uh just keep that in mind like not everyone's going to play perfectly so it's always good to recognize when you do and when you don't make the right play so immediately you can already see the advantage of clear mind. I barely put any gold into my experience, but I'm already almost level six at this point in the game. It's stage two seven right now. Normally at this point in the game, you're level five, but you're like zero XP, or maybe you're level five with two or four XP. But point being, you are a bit ahead of the curve, even though you did not spend much money into leveling at all, or it might've been zero. One tip guys, I make a mistake here. Don't pick up the orbs whenever you have clear mind until the end of the round, because I missed out on three experience here, which is a big mistake. Uh, so what you want to do instead is just don't pick up any loot, wait for the round to end, and then pick them up in order to get the, the units. Um, it just so happened that I got units that I wanted, so I couldn't quite keep them there. So here we do our first level up. We're going to be level six, and we're going to be, I guess, five Dragon Mancer, so we could probably buy the extra karma, sell the set, and do the same pair trick that we did before. So right now we're running Lee Sin. Jeweled Gauntlet is obviously really good on him. Jeweled Gauntlet plus Infinity Edge, probably one of the better item combinations for Lee Sin, if not the best one. Um, but I don't think we're actually going Lee Sin this game, because whenever you have clear mind, you don't really want to do a three cost reroll, because you're going to have stuff on your bench when you reroll, so whenever you play that, you're going to be pretty much not using one of your augments for a good portion of the game. So you want to play flex, play around maybe a four cost carry or maybe a dragon carry instead of a three cost unit. So that's why I slammed the redemption on him because I'm going to use him as both my tank and my damage dealer in the time being. So now we have salvage bin, featherweights, and ancient archives. So featherweights, useless for us. We don't have any one or two cost units. Salvage bin, I don't really like using that one. And so we're just going to reroll here. Ascension is going to be pretty good for most compositions. Uh, whenever you have a good tank, Ascension is generally going to be good. So we see a Zippy here. I'm going to go ahead and sell the Karmas and drop Zippy in for now because I don't think we're relying on the Dragon Mancers quite yet. We're just kind of playing Lee Sin temporarily right now. Uh, so we're facing someone who's level 5, all unupgraded, so we should win this. We really wish we lost Streaked earlier, but unfortunately that did not happen. But again, it's not the end of the world, especially when you're in like lower ranks, such as Iron. Um, obviously, when you're in Iron, the people there are not going to be looking at guides. They probably don't know what the best comps are. They probably don't know what leveling patterns are. And they're probably not picking the right augments either. So there is a little more breathing room for error compared to every other rank, obviously. But if you are in Iron, like don't sweat. Like It doesn't take that long to climb up. Uh, it really depends on how much you're willing to learn and how quickly you learn as well. So if you have experience in other games, that definitely does help if you guys are new. Uh, but if you guys are experienced, probably looking at the leveling guide, even from previous sets, will do the most help for you. I'll leave a link up here or a card to my website uh, for the leveling guide so you guys can check that out. Uh, so we're facing this guy. He has a... he's running an assassin team. Assassins... In set 7 and 7.5 have not been that strong, which is unfortunate because I actually really like assassins because they keep people honest. So hopefully they're buffing this comp in like the the next couple of patches. Ooh, the Lee Sin got a nice triple kick, but unfortunately not enough to win that round. But we're going to be doing what's called like uh, either a fast 8 or a fast 7. We're going to try to use our experience boost from clear mind 
to try to get to level seven as fast as possible, then roll down, get some upgrades, and then sell everything again, go to level eight, and kind of chill after that. So we have a Negatron, we could build Ionic Spark. It's really good because we have a Jeweled Gauntlet already. Jeweled Gauntlet is the item that we have on Lee Sin. It's an ability power item, so Ionic Spark is another ability power item which works really well in combination. The reason why is because Ionic Spark, it lowers the magic resistance of the nearby enemies. So when you're dealing magic damage, obviously that's going to be a great effect that you have there. So we're going to go ahead and slap that on Lee Sin because we know we're going to sell him later. A lot of times people want to play the same comp from the start of the game to the end of the game. And that's generally not the best way to play. So you could use people to hold things temporarily. And that's what I'm doing in this case with Lee Sin. He's holding both my damage items and my tank items. And I'm just going to sell him later once I find an appropriate carry for my team. So we see a new shop here. I have the Nunu. I really want to get to level 8, I think. Maybe around like 4 1, 4 2, we get to level 8 and then roll all the way down and swap our entire team out. Because we don't have many upgrades right now. So we're really, really weak. That's why we're being like demolished by every team we face. Uh, this guy's Dragon Mancer Nunu. That's a really fun comp to try if you guys have not done so yet. This set. Essentially, you just build Dragon Mancer Spatula on Nunu, which is Spatula plus Rod. And then you build a lot of healing items, as many as you can get. So you build stuff like Hexec Gunblade, Bloodthirster, Hand of Justice, get as many as you can of those on him. And then you just give him the Dragon Mancer Spatula. And then he just eats units, and then he heals for like 3,000 every eat, which is essentially his whole health bar. So every time he casts a spell, you just heal to full and kill one unit. We get a sword, a belt, a rod, and a tear. I made the mistake of picking them up. I did pause on the last one. And now we pick it up. Okay. Got a Yasuo, Siphon, and a Yon. So we could do something with Warriors in that case. We also have a Zeke's Herald. The only issue is that we have a lot of ability power items, not so many attack damage items. So we definitely don't want to like do a full-blown warrior comp, even though we got the champions for it. But maybe we could use it to pivot into something else. I'm probably going to build either Shojin or an Archangel Staff. Um, I opt for Shojin and Morello instead. Uh, so you could have done Archangels plus Zeke's. That, that would be pretty interesting to do because then you could put that on your AP carry, such as the Archangel Staff and the Jeweled Gauntlet, and then the Zeke's as a support item. And then I have two tank items in the Redemption and the Ionic Spark. So it does make my team like at least semi-balanced, but this one, this item combo isn't that bad either. Morello is good because it reduces the healing on the enemy team. And then... Spear of Shojin, it's great for a specific champion I'm kind of leaning towards right now. Whenever you have a lot of experience, you could do what's called like a fast nine and do like a dragon team. And I think that's what I'm aiming for right now. We got Eye of the Storm, not the best augment. It's really good if you're doing a frontline carry, but I think we're leaning more towards a backline carry right now. We hit a random Jace 2, which is obviously amazing. Okay, there's a Shivana. We could play that. We're finally going to actually use the bonus experience we have. Uh, we have a Deja there. Shivana with Morello Namakon, by the way, is insane good. So yeah, we're going to slap some items onto him. Drop the Jace in the middle. Jeweled Gauntlet could go on Jace or uh, Shivana. I'm going to drop it on Jace now just because he's upgraded. You want to put items on units that you upgrade. A mistake I see commonly at lower levels is that people see like they look up a build they're like oh let me play a zaya build and they're like oh, okay so you want zaya you want shivana you want this you want that and oh all the items are on zaya but they play a one star zaya and put all their items on zaya instead of like their upgraded two star varus so the varus is going to make much better use of the items because its base stats are a lot higher items are kind of like a multiplier and obviously the bigger number you multiply the more benefit you're going to gain from it. So always put items on your units that are upgraded, even if they don't belong in your comp. Like right now, we're literally running a random Jace in there. I know he's a shapeshifter, but it's pretty much like not really a unit that benefits my team. But he is two starred. He is a four cost unit. So that's why I'm going to put items on him over the other people, such as like Deja could have used the jeweled gauntlet, for example. Uh, I do want to add in one more dragon to my team. When you get to four dragons, they added this new mechanic, which gives you one extra team slot. So I actually could have played this team 
with four dragons already. So what I needed to do was bench my Yasuo and my Jace, put in the fourth dragon such as Siphon, and then put the extra Jace back in. I wouldn't be able to play the Yasuo, but I would be able to fit in four dragons plus one extra unit at level eight, which is pretty neat. Notice how I'm not using the clear mind augment anymore. Getting to level nine is really risky and really hard, so you only want to do it after you get a lot of upgrades on your team. Uh, let's see what we have here. Oh, actually, I would not have been able to do the dragon thing. You need four unique dragons. I thought I had Shiyou, but apparently I do not. Um, so in terms of items here, we probably want to get either a third Shivana item, a third Aoshin item, or a tank item. Any of those would do, but since we don't have any components right now, we kind of want to go for something like... It, it really doesn't matter what we actually went for there because we could go for any of those directions. Uh, so we go for... So we got a Pantheon here. Uh, I guess AP, the ability power item that we got, is a little better because AP works on both Shivana and Deja and, or Aoshin. So it kind of works out in that sense. There's the Idis. Let's drop Idis in. We got Needlessly Big Gem. I forgot what that one does. I believe that one... Okay, so when your holder is alive after 15 seconds, grant a couple of gold, and I think your units deal bonus damage afterwards. Okay, let's look at Shivana Go. Morello is incredible on her. Morello plus Ionic Spark is probably the two best items on Shivana, apart from like some really weird three item combinations. Maybe if you go like a full AP Shivana, like triple hat or hat, double Archangel staff, that might be a little better. But in terms of like a two item combo, having Ionic Spark plus Morello, it just provides so much utility for your team, especially when Shivana's one starred. She's not going to be one tapping people, so getting the anti heal is a lot better. But obviously, if your Shivana is two starred, maybe like triple hat's really good because then she insta bursts everyone on her first jump. <laughs> but that's kind of difficult to rely on, I will say. We don't really need the Pantheon. I'm going to go ahead and drop that in, get the Idis 2. Whenever you're playing a Dragon Comp, Rakan is an incredible unit to pair with your team. If you think of Rakan Synergy, he gives Rage Wing, he gives Guardian, and he gives Mystic. There are coincidentally three dragons with all of those traits. One of them is Shivana with Rage Wing, one of them is Idis with Guardian, and the last one is Shiyou with Mystic. I should be buying the Shiyou. I don't know why I'm not. I should sell this Yasuo and buy, buy the Shiyou and play it. But yeah, it's just a mistake I'm making. I, I don't know why I'm making it. Okay, Shivana is able to finish that one off. Holy cow, look at the damage from the... That's a one-starred unit. If she's two-star, like, the game is pretty much over already. Uh, that's a good item for a hat. I think I should take that. I did refresh over it, but I, I really should have taken that. I'm tunnel... I, I remember what I did this game. I tunneled on going for a Aoshin item. So Aoshin likes a healing item as his last item. So I have the Spear of Shojin for mana regen. I have the Jeweled Gauntlet for damage. And then I wanted the Hexet Gunblade. Fun fact, Dragon Claw has a bonus effect on dragons. It gives like extra stats to them. So whenever you're running a dragon comp, you probably want Dragon Claw. We're able to swap the item off of Idis. I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's this little trick with Shimmer Scale where if you bench your Shimmer Scale units, the items pop off the unit and then you can put them back in. So if I wanted to put the Gargoyle Stone Plate on my Idis, I do have that option now. But I opted not to at the end of the day. I'm going to drop the Needlessly Large Gem back on the Idis. Uh, let's see if I hit a... Oh, there we go. The Shivana 2. And I guess we're just missing Aoshin at this point. The reason why I rolled there was because I have four pairs. I have Yasuo pair, I have Deja pair, and I have Rakan pair and the Shivana pair. So whenever you have like three or more things to roll for, it's generally a good idea to do so. Some people might not have rolled here because they're like, oh, with needlessly big gem, the more gold you have, the more bonus damage you get from the buff. But that's really like not looking at the bigger picture. Uh, like whenever you have a lot of pairs on your bench, you just want to roll and upgrade them because that's where your gold usage is going to be the most efficient. If you're only looking for one unit, rolling your gold isn't such a good idea. But if you're looking for like three or more units, it's generally like decent to do so. If I ever have like three or four pairs on my bench, I normally just roll around like 10 gold, even if it's at like a weird timing. So we hit the Deja 2 there, but I see the Aoshin, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab him, drop him in. 
put the items on him. And we are good to go from there. I don't really think that's we need anything much more for our team. One thing to note, uh, for Shivana items, you you heard how I was talking before about how Shivana likes ability power. But if I have two utility items on her, such as the Morella Namicon and the Ionic and the Ionic Spark, she's more of like a, both a tank and a damage dealer. She's not going to one tap anyone, so that means I want her to kind of live a little longer with the Gargoyle Stoneplate. Of course, if you get an AP item on her, you still could use it, but it's not like imperative to get. So just slamming the stone plate on her is perfectly fine. Also, I didn't know I was gonna get her to two star, so that's another thing to consider. Um, so I'm gonna get the four dragon bonus right now, drop in the Rakan. I guess I don't really need Yasuo anymore. I could kinda sell my units and go, go level nine. Okay, this guy's got a Lux three. A little bit of awkward items, but he's mainly going for a uh, Aurelian Soul Carry. I think my Shivana's gonna one tap everyone though. Oh no, she breathed in the wrong direction. Ah, Shivana really has to sneeze in the right direction in order to get the the most value from her. But sometimes she does it, sometimes she does. So on this carousel, I could go for an Aoshin to get Aoshin two star. Could also go for like another tank item. It's not really much to get here though, so I think I'm gonna grab the the Aoshin. Yeah, cause Siphon I don't really care about. I make a mistake here. I sell the siphon because I'm like, oh, I could still fit four dragons, but I forgot that <laughs> it needs to be four unique dragons. I just wasn't paying attention at this point. I guess the team kind of looks funny here. I guess when I'm in iron, I should play like an iron. <laughs> you could kind of do more fun stuff because you have time to get away with it. I'm pretty sure Shivana can just solo most of these teams though. I don't think he or she actually needs any help from the teammates. That would be an interesting experiment to see. I should like get my board to get a two or play the game to get a two star Shivana every game and then just sell all my units and see how high I can get. That would be pretty fun for, for like a challenge, I guess. We're able to win that round there. We're on a 10 game win streak right now. So we're getting a ton of bonus gold. We're almost level nine right now. We could definitely hit it after the neutral round. This guy is also running kind of like a dragon team. He's got three dragons. He's got his own Shivana. Ours is obviously stronger, and he grouped up all in one place, so we're able to sneeze onto everyone. And then Aoshin does his thing. His ability is really cool, right? And we get into a new shop. We get the Aoshin too. Quick tip here, put your extra Aoshin on the bench, because if the Aoshin is on the board, notice how we have three items on one and one item on the other. When that happens and they're both on the board, it'll take one item from each Aoshin and then take a random item after that. So if I had left that Aoshin in when I upgraded the unit, I would have a ZZ Rot on my Aoshin, which I do not want. But I put him on the bench and then I buy the Aoshin that always pops off the ZZ Rot portal. It's just like a fun little fact, I guess. Uh, there's a Zeke's there. Zeke's mm, not really that useful. It's not bad. I'll use it to buff up my Aoshin. So it's not completely useless, but I would have preferred, I guess I don't really have any items I need anymore. I have three two-star dragons and they all have three items on them. So it didn't really matter what I got on that neutral round. We're facing the astral person again. He has upgraded Aoshin now. So that definitely is scary, especially with one of the Orn items. But we do have Aoshin too. So we got stronger as well. Yeah, Aoshin is just probably the best damage unit in the game if he's upgraded. Mainly because he hits everyone, and it's just a lot of damage. I don't really know how to describe it otherwise. So I'm going to level up next turn. Um, oh no, Aoshin got Mana Reeve, so maybe he doesn't cast. Yeah, did not cast. I think Shivana can take care of it, though. It's tough. Swain's pretty tanky, so I actually don't know. We do have good tank killing items, though, so maybe she can do it. Also, Idas just isn't dying. Holy cow. This team is really strong right now. We'll go level nine now. And what would we even put in? I'm not really sure. I kind of want to get a three star dragon somehow. Maybe we could <laughs> keep 80 gold for the needlessly big gem. Needlessly big gem increases the damage of your units up to for however, for however much gold you have up to 80 gold. So we kind of have the maximum right now, which is 
a little funny to say the least because it means Shivana just after 15 seconds she just does so much but we're not even making it to that point in the game so I don't even know if it's that useful but we'll get to level 9 soon enough so on this carousel I guess we want a utility item or a tank item I forgot to choose an item I did I didn't react fast enough so we got edge of night it's whatever do we level up now <laughs> sure do we roll or do we keep the gold for our for our upgraded damage? I kind of want a two-star dragon because it's the last round. The other person has one life left. So definitely want to upgrade something there. I really do hope that we can get... What's it called, though? Uh, there's not enough time to roll for a uh, three-star dragon. Each dragon, the legendary ones, they cost eight gold each. So if I had to get six of them more to upgrade to three stars so eight times six is 48 gold i just don't have enough gold to buy everything so even if i got perfect rolls it just wouldn't matter so that's a little unfortunate it's really difficult to get a three star dragon if you think about it let me know if you guys have gotten it before i guess like message in the youtube comments but that's going to be game one uh that was an iron it was a little easy i will admit that but you guys will see as the video goes on the opponents get harder and we'll have to adjust our play based on that and do a little bit of different things so each time you go up a rank you also have to be better at some things too right because your opponents get better as well but whatever rank you're at each one of these games you can learn a little bit here a little bit there in order to really know what types of mistakes people at that rank are making and what you need to do to improve to get to the next one uh, but without further ado let's get into game number two all right let's hop into game number two this one is the bronze game so starting item we're going to have a belt Belt is great for early game because you can build a lot of defensive items with it. Uh, Sunfire is really good, Warmog is really good, and that just means you are able to flex into a lot of different compositions because every team comp needs a tank item. We got a Rod, so we could think about going something more AP oriented, or Rod could turn into a Rage Blade if you're going an attack damage composition. I'm going to hold on to the Astrals right now just in case I get an Astral start because we have... Uh, both a rod and like a tank item, which is okay for it. You could also pick up both the Sejuani's instead of the Vladimir in Italy. That would be fine too. So in this next shop here, we really want to see what our item is. Uh, we don't have any two stars yet, but we do have a couple of pairs. We have the Sejuani's and the Senna's in our shop. So let's just see what we get off the neutral round. We end up getting just a bow. Um, I should sell this Malphite for the Senna, but I'm not able to click it fast enough. Uh, so here we have Tempest, Shimmer Scale, or Item Grab Bag. So Shimmer Scale obviously is good if you want to go for like kind of like a lucky game, but we don't really have any Shimmer Scales on our bench right now, so we can't really go for that. Tempest, it's pretty solid overall. It could flex into a bunch of different things. We have a lease in, so that could be possible. Uh, but I feel like Item Grab Bag is just the most flexible here because we're not really committed to anything quite yet, so we might as well just keep our options open by taking the Item Grab Bag. We get a Titan's Resolve, which is really good for Lee Sin. Uh, we could use him as an item holder. Definitely level up here because whenever you take Item Grab Bag, you want to level up because you want a win streak. Uh, the reason why is because it's not really an Econ Augment. It gives you immediate power to your board, so you just want to take advantage of that right away. Here you could build either... Rage Blade, ZZ Rod, or Morello Namicon, I'd actually be fine with all three items. Just definitely build one of them. If you built the Rage Blade, put it on Ezreal. ZZ Rod, I would put it on Sejuani. And if you built the Morello, uh, you'd probably need to play the Karma instead of the set and put it on Karma. So here we get a Sejuani 2, which is obviously huge. Rel is interesting to take because we have Cavaliers. Um, so you want to think about what you can play, what you can replace. Right now we have Tempest and Dragonmancer. Uh, Karma versus Set. I probably should have played Karma last turn. The reason why is because we have two tanks already in the front line, so we need more damage in the back line. Uh, you always want to have a mix of both damage and tankiness. We're up against this guy with Kaisa. He has Giant Slayer. Giant Slayer is okay to build early as well. We really should pick up this Rel though. I'm not just. I'm not quite sure when we'll play it though. Don't ask me why I bought the Zeri instead of the Rel. Um, you definitely should be buying Rel there. Uh, so we get another Lee Sin. So maybe we could look into going for a Lee Sin comp. Titan's Resolve is pretty good for him. It's not like the best item on Lee Sin, but it definitely is like playable. So here we're against another Dragon Mancer guy. He's got four Dragon Mancers. But we do have a two star, so I think we are slightly stronger. It depends on like Lee Sin kick RNG. Whoever gets the better kicks, like the AoE ones, probably will win. 
He also has a dragon claw, which was a little annoying, but we were able to kill that. So we should be able to finish this off with the ZZ Rod. Now for items, we had a rod before, so we could do something like going for a Dragon Mancer Spatula with the Spatula on Olaf. We could go for an Ionic Spark to keep wind streaking. We could go for a Rage Blade if we want to go into an attack damage comp. There are honestly a ton of options here. We could also get an item for something else later on, such as a sword if we want to build more into AD. Uh, but we're last pick, so we don't really get too many choices. I think it's either the crit or the negatron, because crit is good for Lee Sin because you could build Jeweled Gauntlet on him. It's probably one of the best damage items on Lee Sin. So here we get an extra Ezreal. We definitely want to level up, so we could sell this... Um, or we don't need to sell anything. We could just level up, sell the Zac, drop the Jeweled Gauntlet on Lee Sin, and yeah, I guess play the second Lee Sin is fine. We don't really have any other synergies to put in because we forgot to buy Rel the other time, but if we had bought Rel, definitely put her in in this slot here. So the correct play, even though I did get Jeweled Gauntlet, I think the better item was Ionic Spark. It keeps you more flexible. If you go for Jeweled Gauntlet, it really locks you into an AP comp, whereas Ionic Spark, it, it's going to keep you win streaking in the early game, but doesn't fully commit you to anything quite yet. So I definitely should have built that over the Jeweled Gauntlet, but I think I was just kind of having some fun here. New shop, not too much to get here, so we'll just skip ahead. We just want to sell and make 20 gold. So we are win streaking. You do have to keep that in mind. We have four wins on the board right now, so you definitely want to get that fifth win going into the neutral round because you get an extra round of win streak or lose streak gold in the neutral round. So it's very important to keep your streak whether you're winning or losing. So if you have items, definitely try to build them if you're win streaking and if you're losing. Uh, sometimes you purposely don't play a strong board in order to keep your streak. New shop here, nothing too interesting. I guess you could pick up Lilia, but that's about it. We get a chain vest, that's good. We could build like a tank item for our other dudes. And then a Negatron cloak, okay. I did kind of want some offensive item for our backline or maybe some support items, but this one's fine. Gargoyle Stone Plate works in a lot of different compositions, so it doesn't really lock you into anything. Onto the next round, we're facing a Dark Flight player. Uh, don't do what this guy did. He sacrificed one of his Dark Flight units, and the reason why you don't want to do that is because the unit you sacrifice in the middle gives items to your other Dark Flights. So if you end up killing one of your Dark Flights, you just end up getting one less item. So you definitely don't want to do that. Okay, here we have a lot of different options. Since we're high health, late game specialist does seem like a pretty good pick because we're likely going to hit level 9. We have 50 gold right now. We have a lot of health. Uh, Pandora's items is good if you want to keep wind streaking if we could complete an item with it, but we can't at this point, so we don't really want that. Axiom Arc is good on Lee Sin though, so if you took late game specialist or Axiom Arc, I would not blame you at all. Because whenever you go on AP comp, mana regen is really important, and that just gives like a ton of it. It's especially good on Lee Sin because he often kills people whenever he kicks, so uh, it does give him kind of like a reset capability. He didn't do it here because he's just a one-star unit, but as we level him up, he'll definitely be able to get more use out of the Axiom Arc. We're able to win this round here. This guy's also going for Dark Flights. So we'll have to look out for that later on. All right, so there's the Ezreal 2. That's a no-brainer. Uh, can we go Siphon? Hmm. In the Whispers comp, there isn't really that great of a Jeweled Gauntlet user. I think the Whisper units are Siphon, Pantheon, Zyra. I guess Zyra can use it, but she's not really the primary carry of the composition. She's more of a CC unit. So he's going for... I guess he's using Volibear as an item holder. He does have the Triforce augment, so he might be doing a Dragon Mancer comp as well. Triforce is good for Dragon Mancer because obviously Volibear and Lee Sin are both three cost units. Ah, I don't think we're able to kill him because he's got the Dragon Claw. Yeah, I think he wins this round. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't see his health bar because it's covered by the scoreboard, but yeah, he's, he's definitely not low enough here. So we lose our win streak. Unfortunate. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. We didn't have any upgrades. We could have rolled for an upgrade, but I feel like getting to level 7 is more important whenever you're playing a Lee Sin comp. I'm not saying we're committed to Lee Sin yet, but after I took the Axiom Arc, I feel like I definitely leaned into that a little more. If you want to be a little more flexible, definitely go for the late game specialist augment on 3-2. But keep in mind that augment only worked this game because we are high health and we had a lot of gold. So I go for a... 
glove here because Negatron, it really only builds Ionic Spark for me, but the glove can build IE with Jeweled Gauntlet. It's probably like the best two item combo on Lee Sin. So I end up leveling up here. The reason why you want to level up is because whenever you can level up while staying above 30 gold, you generally should do it. If you think about it this way, some people don't like leveling up early because you lose a little bit of gold, but we have two rounds until the neutral rounds, so we really only lose three gold during this time span, but we get an extra unit slot, so we have a stronger board and we save health that way, and we also get better unit odds for two turns, so if you just lose three gold, it's not that bad of a trade-off if you think about it. All right, new shop. Uh, nothing too important here, so we'll go ahead and skip ahead. I see a lot of people, they always want to have either the max interest or they have zero gold. And you really just want to keep a balance between having like a little bit of gold and having a bit of board strength. Uh, again, you're not really losing out on too much if you level up to level 7 on stage 3-5. And I go over this on my leveling guide on my website at bunnymuffins.lol. And then there's like a tab at the top that says, I think it's like leveling guide where it says leveling, and if you click that, you'll be able to access the site. So we get the lease in two, that's obviously huge. Uh, we could pick up the extra set, because we only have set one star. Getting the six Dragon Mancer is a little tricky. You either need a Yasuo, or you need to get a Dragon Mancer spatula, both of which are hard to get. Well, let's get these items here. I was a little slow on picking everything up, because uh, I, th I think when I was playing these games, I was playing a different game on my second monitor, so... <laughs> just a little side note there. So we do get the Dragon Mancer spatula. That is actually huge. It's like incredibly lucky. I'm going to drop it on the Sejuani. It doesn't really matter who carries the Dragon Mancer spatula if you're going for a Lee Sin carry. But you could Dragon Mancer other units. A lot of people are doing Dragon Mancer Nunu right now. That's probably the most popular one. Uh, but then you have to have a Nunu to put it on. Uh, so we could put it on Sejuani because we're selling her. Or we could just go for Lee Sin carry. Just do the normal build. But we have the extra spatula item. Uh, so we get some good kicks there. We're definitely getting a bit of a use out of the Axiom arc. Nothing too crazy because Lee Sin's mana pool is a little high, but it is better than nothing. Ah, oh, so close there. Okay, new augments. We could get the second Axiom arc. That wouldn't be too bad. But whenever you're going for a trait, you definitely want to pick the trait-specific augments because obviously these augments are tuned to be a lot better with the trait they're active for, and obviously they're trash for everything else. So whenever you do see them and you're going for a specific comp, consider yourself lucky and just like pretty much always get them. A lot of times whenever you are committed to a comp, a lot of the decision making gets a lot easier. We started out flexible in the beginning, but since we got like a bunch of Lee Sins, we got a bunch of the Dragon Mancers upgraded and we got good items for him, that's when we really decided to commit to the Lee Sin. Now, this person's going for the Lagoon build, uh, but he's got level one Soms. Wow, he was actually able to kill the... <laughs> <laughs> Kill the Lee Sin. I, I forgot that happened. Um, but he doesn't have some items yet, so not that scary. But I don't think we're able to kill this, this Zack at all. He's just way too tanky for us right now. Yeah, he's able to definitely finish us off right there. Uh, wow, he heals for a lot. 820. That's, that's a pretty decent bit. All right, so we do get the Nunu here. You could go into the Dragon Mancer Nunu. It's probably the better build, but let's just stick with Lee Sin for now. Normally when you go for Dragon Mancer Nunu, you want to go for the healing items. If you don't have healing items, it's not going to be as effective. We don't have healing from our augments. We don't have uh, Bloodthirster or Hextech Gunblade. You generally want both. So even though you still could go for him, uh, it's not like that much better if you don't have the right items for it. So we lose this round, but it's perfectly okay to lose these rounds because we were high health before. We were like 92 health going into stage 4, so you could definitely use your life as a resource. A lot of people like to roll during the early parts of stage 4, which is good in a lot of situations, but not this one because we were wind streaking at the start, so we want to hit the later levels in order to really power ourselves up. So we had the glove here, so let's get the sword and call it a day. That way we get our infinity edge, and again, it's probably jeweled gauntlet infinity edge as like the two best item combo on Lee Sin. Last item, you probably want a healing item, but we weren't able to get that this game. A lot of times, people want to focus on like the best in slot items, and yeah, sure, I do want a healing item and two damage items on Lee Sin, but that's not going to happen all the time, so you can't just lose a lot of rounds hoping to get the perfect items. 
it's better to just slam the items and just get value from them right away. Uh, it may look weird, but I put the stone plate on our Soraka. I know it gets zero value there, but since I sold the unit holding the stone plate, I need to just put it on someone else, and I plan to keep all my frontline units, whereas Soraka I plan to swap out later, so that's why I put it on her. So we get a Kiana 2 here. Don't ask me why I did not build the Infinity Edge yet. You definitely should. But there's Volibear. That's our sixth Dragomancer. I need to take someone out. So there we go. We took out the Soraka, sold her, and then we're going to put the item onto Volibear. You can put it on Volibear or Set. It's not like that big of a difference. So he's playing... Oh, he didn't finish his item on his Dark Flight. Another thing you want to do on Dark Flight, and you see this a lot more at like lower levels, and it is the start of the set, so maybe this person didn't play that many games yet, but you do want to put a full item on whatever unit you sacrifice on Dark Flights, because obviously you just get a lot more value that way. Um, but we are in a bronze game, so we're not going to judge people too harshly. So now we're on to the Treasure Dragon. Ooh, these, this is definitely takeable. Ah. <sighs> Did I actually refresh this? This is for sure takeable because Ionic Spark is really good with Lee Sin because it lowers the magic resistance of the enemy team. So you could put it on the frontline tank right next to him. And then I have the Infinity Edge for him to just have as a third item because it's a really good combo. So I actually refreshed that. Wow, that is definitely a mistake. I don't know why I'm doing that. Was I going for a Graves carry here? Yeah, that, that's for sure a mistake. I did not like that play at all. Especially since I had the random item at the beginning of the game. I have a lot of items. So I don't need that much more. So whenever you get a three gold thing, whenever you get an extra item from augments, it's generally pretty good. So I'm really surprised by my play there. I guess I wanted a healing item on Lee Sin. That might have been my thought process that game. But I feel like if I just slammed the infinity edge, it would have been fine. Um, but let's add him up Graves here. He's got the Deathblade, Hand of Justice, and the Dragonmancer Spatula. So I do have the Hero in Training augment, so you always want to put whatever the other Dragonmancer you want to buff is uh, next to the main guy. So that's why I have Graves next to Lee Sin in the positioning. I've noticed a lot of people don't read their augments. Even like a lot of good players forget sometimes. You really need to just pay attention every single game. For example, Exiles. A lot of people forget Exiles exist. That's the one where you have to isolate your units in order to get a shield at the beginning of a round. And I, I've even seen like pro players forget they have it. So it's just something to keep in mind whenever you're playing. So unfortunate this game, you may have noticed a lot of times when I play Lee Sin, I reroll at level 7, but there was another Dragonmancer player this game, the guy we're facing right now, and whenever you're contested, it's often hard to reroll because there's just going to be less copies of whatever your desired unit is. So that's why we didn't roll on 7 this game, we decided to level up instead to level 8, and you could roll on 8 afterwards. Uh, just to see if you magically hit it. Alright, next round here, I do want to play this Ao Shin. Somehow, I'm regretting not building Spear of Shoujin, but on the Graves, obviously, like, Hand of Justice, Deathblade is better. Spear of Shoujin isn't that great on Graves, but if you do go for the Aurelian Soul, which I should have here, you definitely need some sort of mana regeneration on him. Alright, so this is a different Dark Flight guy. There were two Dark Flights this game, I believe. Um, okay. He doesn't really have any damage on his team, so we're able to wipe him out right there. That's good. So what items do we need? We have six damage items, so we need a tank item. So we definitely want to go for like Warmog's Redemption, or ZZ Rot, or Sunfire Cape here. I like the ZZ Rot, maybe, because that's a, another Aurelian Soul, so maybe we could use the item remover on our bench to remove that from him if we do manage to get, uh, not Aurelian Soul, sorry, Aeocean 2-star. I feel like that's better than going for the redemption there. So we almost get Graves 2, we're one off, there's another Aeocean. Definitely want to swap out our team if we hit Aeocean 2. It's not even a question. So right now we're just re-rolling for Lee Sin or slow rolling for him, so we just go down to 50 every single game. Ooh, that is a pretty big Swain. I hope they buff Swain later in this set. Right now he's not that great, but hopefully whenever you're watching this he is a bit stronger. He technically should be kind of unkillable. But yeah, it really depends on the patch. 
uh, you always want to have some sort of like knowledge on what's strong in the current meta and I do keep that updated every Friday on my meta snapshot at bunnymuffins.lol slash meta so definitely check that out when you have time hopefully Swain does get better obviously he beat me here but uh, I also have 50 gold he has 10 gold so there's a bit of a power difference there because he spent all his gold and I am saving mine for the late game. Not able to get the Lee Sins quite yet, but I should have them soon. So there's a guy Zephyring and Shrouding. Oh, jeez, that's not good at all. Lee Sin got Shrouded. Same with my front line. It's not the end of the world, but obviously not good. Uh, Positioning is very important in teamfight tactics. I see a lot of posts on like Reddit where people are saying, hey, how did my team lose? I had all my team upgraded, but maybe it came down to positioning because it matters quite a bit in this game. Luckily we're still able to win because our team is just stronger, but it's always something to keep in mind. Okay, so there's another redemption. So I guess I could just double redemption my Volibear. I really need Volibear 2 star because I just don't have a front line right now. So I rolled down to 50 gold, did not hit anything. Uh, let's roll down to 50 again. We get a Kiana. Okay, there's Aeotian. So now we have to think like how do we place this person in? Do we have items for Aeotian? What Dragomancers do we want to give up? Which Tempest do we want to give up? The Tempest you want to give up is probably going to be Ezreal because it's just the worst uh, Tempest unit. Uh, do I want six Dragomancer? Maybe, but now I'm thinking maybe I want to level up instead of finishing off the Lee Sin just to put in the six Tempest units such as Kiana. Kiana's good because she CCs the enemy team and it's like an AoE CC. Sometimes she hits like one or two units, uh, which is all that you can ask for from a two cost unit. Uh, we also do want items on our Aeoshin. A naked Aeoshin definitely is not that great. Uh, some legendaries are good without items. Some legendaries really need items. For example, Bard, Yasuo, Zoe. They provide a lot of crowd control, so you don't need items on them. Of course, items are good for them, but you don't need items for them is what I'm trying to say. Aeoshin, I'm not sure if Aeoshin's a guy or a girl, but uh, Aeoshin pretty much needs items in order to do damage so if you're like purely a damage champion like yeah <laughs> there's no getting around that so he he just needs items All right here's the Soam player from before this person's got a ton of items on this back line so the way to beat Lee Sin is having burst damage and Soam comps they're more of like a area of effect damage type of comp so Lee Sin's very good against that because while Soam is doing a little bit of damage to everyone uh, none of the units really matter apart from Lee Sin. So here's a Zaya player. Zaya is a really strong comp right now. I think this is a Zaya guild build that he's doing with uh, with some Rage Wing. We do need the Lee Sin 3. If we do have Lee Sin, it's kind of like a delicate balance. If he has Zaya 2 and you have Lee Sin 2, he should win. If you have a Lee Sin 3, you should win. But then once he gets Shibana 2, maybe he wins again. But then you could counteract that with maybe like a Yasuo 2. Oh, there's a Yasuo right there. There's also a Tempest Spatula. There's also a Dragonmancer Spatula. There's a lot to pick here. Uh, Yasuo is just such a good unit though, right? Uh, this one's tough. I probably should go Yasuo here, but I ended up not picking anything. <laughs> okay, we got it. <laughs> a little lucky there. Yeah, Karma's just a useless unit, so just swap those two. And it's also a very good item on Yasuo. Titan's Resolve is definitely something that you want. We talked about best in slot items before already, but for legendaries, Whenever you're going for a legendary comp, I'm never going into the game building Yasuo items because look at how late in the game it is. It's stage 6-5 and we saw our first Yasuo just now. So you never want to build items for your legendary carries because you're just not guaranteed to get them. So you just build like decent items for them and then put them on them later. I know here Yasuo isn't our main carry so it doesn't matter as much, uh, but it's just like a common mistake that I see people doing. So we do end up hitting the Lee Sin 3. And again, as I said before, Zaya 2, maybe he beats us. But now that we have Lee Sin 3, I think we should win. We have pretty good items on Lee Sin as well. Uh, but maybe once he gets Shivana 2, the tides turn a little bit. But he has Shivana 1 right now, so we got a bit of time. He does have a Shivana on his bench though, but maybe we could get someone else in there. Nope, we still lose. Maybe Graves pulls off a miracle, but uh, it's okay. Second place, not bad. Let's move on into game number three. All right, let's get into the next game. We have a belt start. This one is the silver game, game number three. And then we get a sword. So we could definitely go for some AD comp. You could also do the Zeke's Aphelios build if you really want to. 
Uh, here we do have a pair of sets. We got the chain vest, so we could build something like a Sunfire Cape. Sunfire Cape's really good. We check the Dawnbringer variation because we have a Leona in our shop. Uh, but we'll just stay like this, and then if we hit nothing, we'll sell the Nar and buy the other set. We get a Varus and an Olaf, so yeah, we'll go ahead and sell the Nar, buy the Wukong, and the set. Probably could have sold Varus to buy the Rel. Uh, ooh. Ah, Built Different is fun for wind streaking. But I don't like built different one. Shapeshifter Heart, I just sold the Gnar. Tiny Titans, Tiny Titans is probably the pick here, but I think I ended up re-rolling here because uh, these are just so boring, you know? Yeah, okay, so we re-rolled them. Double Trouble, Thrill to Hunt, or Triforce. So we have two three costs right now, so we could get Triforce. It's essentially the same thing as built different because we have two three cost units. Uh, you could think about it that way, I guess. But let's sell the other two units, level up, and put in the Wukong so that we get two warriors. The reason why I don't like Built Different 1, it's not that it's bad. It's just that I don't want to commit my whole comp based on a Silver Augment. Uh, so I'd rather just do something like this. This does lock me into some sort of 3-cost carry, but there are a lot of them. So I could switch between different things. Like last game, we did Lee Sin carry. Uh, some people do Volibear carry. You could do a Nunu carry. You could do a Varus carry, you could do an Olaf carry, Diana. There are a lot of different options at 3 cost, so you're not completely locked into anything quite yet. We do have decent item starts for this Olaf, though, so we do have to keep that in mind. The sword's pretty good for him. Zeke's is also great for warrior builds. Oh, there's a Diana. So we'll drop her in over the warrior, and that's just more 3 cost to use in our game. I do end up building the Zeke's on Varus. I think I just forgot to build it last round. I didn't have time to because I leveled at the last second. And then I didn't want to put it on any of the units that I had. Um, because you obviously want the units together because Zeke's is an aura item. So it affects the units right next to you. This guy has a Lilia 2 already. Holy cow. That's a little scary. And the stone plate. So we actually want our Olaf to die. Because Olaf, his ability, it works out so that he gains attack damage every time he dies. So you actually do want him to die early on. So it's perfectly fine to lose streak with this type of build. Um, it's also like fine to win streak as well. But Olaf dying definitely is a bonus. I'm actually going to end up leveling up here uh, in order to play more three costs and a warrior. Or, or sorry, or a bruiser. It does suck losing our only two star unit. But three stars with Triforce, it pretty much gives the same amount of bonus. Um, because they get a bunch of other stats as well. And it allows me to hold on to more 3 costs so I could kind of see what pairs I'm hitting in order to move on later into the game to like really decide my direction. For example, we built a Zeke's already, so we're definitely going into some sort of attack speed, attack damage type of build, but maybe we, we hit a bunch of Varuses, maybe we hit a bunch of Rengars, maybe we hit a bunch of Olafs. You really can't tell at this point in the game, so I want to hold on to as many as possible to see what happens. We have a Chain Vest. Uh, I guess we could go for the belt. Negatron's good for Runons. Uh, this one's kind of like, you could go either way, I'm pretty sure. Maybe the belt's better because we're wind streaking, so I should have taken that, just slammed the Sunfire Cape to wind streak harder. There's a Lee Sin, but we don't really have Lee Sin items this game. I feel like I should play the Double Varus. I don't know why I'm playing the other Lee right now. Yeah, Double Varus, 100% better. Uh, I guess, actually, no. Lee Sin's good here because we need a frontline unit. And yeah, Lee Sin is actually our only tank unit right now. Unless you count Diana, I don't really count her. Oh no, the Ezreal live with one health. That's really unfortunate. We lose here, barely. Maybe if we got the Sunfire Cape, we could have won. A new shop, there is a Deja. We could do a Deja build, but we just don't have any of the other Mirage units. We also don't have Sejuani. Sejuani is a really good unit to play Mirage early on. And the reason why is because you play Nunu as your main tank and Sejuani just gives guild and is also a cavalier. This guy has a two star, but maybe we win anyways. Hopefully our Olaf dies here for the reasons we stated before. Okay, nice. All right, I guess we just lose anyways. Ah, yeah, that's fine. All right, so there is a Wukong. Definitely grab that for Warrior. We end up getting some gold. Silas. Don't really need the Silas, but we could use him as a front line for Bruiser. Actually, no, Silas is good in this comp if you're going for Olaf. I just don't know if we're doing Olaf quite yet. Okay, so there is an Olaf. Maybe we could do Olaf. We're seeing a bunch of him. In the meta right now, he's also pretty decent at the time of recording. 
So this person's going for Mirage. And oh wow, he's got the Rage Blade on his day shot. That's a really good item for him. And he's got good tank items on his bench. This guy's got a pretty good game setup. He definitely should build a tank item on his Leona, either Sunfire Cape or the Gargoyle Stoneplate. I'm not sure why he is not doing that. Hopefully our Olaf dies here. Then we get more stacks. Beautiful, perfect. Oh, we end up losing. <laughs> I thought we could win without uh, or with Olaf dying, but it's a little too much to ask for. I should sell Nyla and Rengar here. I don't know why I didn't. So Exiles, Preparation, or Blue Battery. So whenever you have Triforce, you want to reroll. Preparation is one of the best reroll augments in the game, so you definitely want to pick that one up. We also have a Zeke's, so you can't do Exiles. Uh, so yeah, pretty much a no-brainer there in terms of augment choices. I end up putting in the Rengar in for Assassins. Uh, he's also a 3-cost unit, so we get more benefit out of that. I feel like I should just sell the Assassins, though. They're costing a lot on my bench. Definitely should have done it that last turn. Probably should do it this turn as well. Uh, so we win here. I don't think Olaf's dying though, but I, I, I guess a win's a win though, you know? This person's going for a Lagoon build. That's an okay start for it in terms of units, but his items are kind of bad. He has two bows and a glove. Yeah, that, that's not going to help too much for Lagoon. Unless you go for like Zeri, I guess that could work for her. Whenever I think of Lagoon, though, I think more of the AP compositions, though. I guess Soam's on our screen right here. Yeah, Soam I think of as the traditional carry for for Lagoons. Uh, oh, another Lagoon player. You get a lot of items and stuff from the Lagoon trait. Uh, there's actually, like, a table. I'll put it on my website of all the reward drops you can get from it. So whenever you are, like, wondering what your next reward is, you could play around it if you have, like, the, the table up. And it's a little different this set because normally they don't release all the tables or like rewards you can get in the game. For example, in previous sets, they had something called Fortune and that trade gave like a bunch of bonuses whenever you were on a big loss streak and then won the next round, but they never made what you get public. But this set, they changed their mind. They're letting us know like what we get publicly. So I definitely want some sort of Olaf items. I think I'm leaning more towards him here, so I think Bow or Sword would be good here. We could build either Titan's Resolve or a Runon's Hurricane. Both are both are good. Which one's better? Hmm. That one's a little tough to say. So if you build Titan's Resolve, you save the Negatron Cloak for a Bloodthirster. Bloodthirster or some sort of healing is really good on Olaf. Sometimes you want to save out for that, but Runon's I think is a better item in general. Ah, it's really tough to see. They're both really good items. Like one of them, they they might be tied in terms of like an item tier list on on Olaf. They're both just really good. But whenever you play anything with attack damage, Runons is going to be one of your best complementary items. But again, Olaf likes stacking. You could think of Titan's Resolve as kind of like a Gwinsu's Rage Blade. It's just like a stacking item throughout the the fight round and obviously Gwinsu's is really good on Olaf which means Titans is also going to be good on him too but as you guys can see like a lot of things in TFT it's just you just have to think about it before you make the decision there are it is intimidating because there's a lot of different options you could do every turn in fact I think I did the analysis before like even on like one or two turns of TFT there's just way too many different variations of things you could do because like you could position units in like infinite different ways and you could also buy certain things in your shop and like, yeah, each turn of TFT has almost like infinite amount of possibilities. And I'm not just saying that, but if you think about it in terms of like chess, chess maybe has like 20 moves you could do per turn, but in TFT, it's like a lot, lot, lot more than that. For example, I could buy Diana, I could buy Lux, I could do one or the other, combine that with repositioning with every single hex on the board. I think there are 28 hexes uh, you could do any sort of combo so if you ever like did one of those math problems of like how many combinations do you have with like this many slots with this many units um, with the order mattering in this case it ends up being like a lot of or like a really big number okay so these items are not what i wanted to see i wanted to see at least one offensive item i could build for olaf and yeah these just are not it you could build maybe thieves gloves and the Gargoyle stone plate. If you're going for a win streak, definitely do that. Uh, you could also go Quicksilver on Olaf. Maybe we go Quick. Ah, that one's tough because I wanted to save the Negatron Cloak for a Bloodthirster, 
but I guess we could build Quicksilver and maybe a Hand of Justice with the other glove. I guess that could work. Hmm. That's what I decided to do this game, but not really too sure if that was the 100% the best play. It's really close. I feel like if you did either or, it would be fine. Uh, the reason... Okay, so I'm doing something a bit weird here. I pre-leveled up to level 7, but I didn't go to level 7. Normally, you want to go level 7 on stage 4-1, but whenever I do 3-cost reroll, I want as much gold as possible to hit my my 3-star units, and level 7 is the best level to roll on for 3-cost units. Uh, you could also go level 8, but level 7 is the best if you don't have a lot of copies. And you, like, built your entire team around that. So we'll pick the Ogman first, then I'll continue on that conversation. So scope weapons here, no-brainer, because everything else is trash. But yeah, you want as much gold as possible, so you want to save every little bit of gold you can in order to get as much gold to hit Olaf 2-star. And even like having less power in stage 4-1, it's like a worthy sacrifice in my opinion. So you only level up to level 7 if you have 50 gold or more whenever you're doing a 3 cost reroll build. That is a very tanky Volibear. That's probably like the tankiest Volibear I've seen in the history of TFT. That new item, the Protector's Vow, I find it really good so far. Wow, I just realized, you know the scope weapon things we're doing? <laughs> Diana's orbs don't work with it. That's kind of funny. Obviously, we're not taking it with Diana in mind. We're taking it with Olaf in mind, so the trade-off is well worth it. But I just see the spinning orbs on Diana, and they're just, like, not hitting anything. and depressing me a little bit. Oh, no. Is she able to do this? Maybe, now that her orbs hit? Okay. <laughs> it's, like, the biggest part of her, her kit or something. Okay, don't need anything in the shop here, so we'll roll down to 50. So range weapons, it works in the back two rows, so you don't have to be all the way in the back. I probably shouldn't do it to my melee guys. I think I was just having some fun here. Uh, but let's roll down to 30. We don't really see anything here. Okay. There's another warrior. You definitely want to play either four warrior, four scale scorn, stuff like that with Olaf. There's another Varus. We don't care about Varus though. I'm selling Varus as soon as I get anything better, such as the two things I mentioned. Uh... Oh, another note. You know how earlier I said you could either reroll for Olaf at level 7 or level 8? The reason why is because the odds are the same. You could see like the blue thing in the bottom left corner near the shop. It says like 35% for tier 3 units, so yeah, level 7 has 35% for 3 cost units, and so does level 8, so it's kind of the same percentages. But the whole decision making behind leveling up to level 7 or level 8, it really depends on how many copies of the unit you have. If you have a lot of copies, you want to roll on level 7. You might be wondering now, like, hey, you only have 3 Olafs, so why are you re-rolling on level 7? Well, we do have a Nico, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Oh, we don't get the Pantheon there. Pantheon's really good because that's the fourth warrior. Um, and since we have the Nico, we technically have like one more copy of the unit. Or sorry, not Nico. Champion Duplicator is a new name for it. The thing about Champion Duplicator is that the earlier you use it, the more value you get from it. So it's a really swingy item. So always keep that in mind whenever you're you have one in your game. So there's a four scale scorn. We get rid of the Varus. And yeah, so that is a lot better now. Probably put that on the Zeke's Herald on either Diana or Rengar. Maybe Rengar? We're probably getting rid of Rengar. I don't think we need the Assassin stuff. I end up not positioning correctly, so I drop it on Diana, but I, I think I put it on Rengar. Or should put it on Rengar. Oh, this Silas. Not Silas, this Siphon looks kind of funky. I wonder if that's good on Siphon. It does give attack speed. I don't know how much the ability power works on him, though. He almost beat us, though. That's that's a, a little scary. Okay, new shop here. Nothing in this one, so we'll roll down. Oh, there's another Olaf. So we have six copies, technically, because of the Nico. Oh, Siphon's a unit we could play. It's not that great to run Siphon, because you lose scale scorn bonus whenever you run a dragon, so always keep that in mind whenever you're doing anything with scale scorn. Like, you generally shouldn't play dragons. But I'm thinking maybe we could transfer into the duo carry bruiser comp with both Siphon and Olaf. It really depends on what items we get in the next treasure dragon. So here... Man, our front line just is so weak. 
It's just a Silas and a Wukong. It's, I guess we have Braum as well. I don't know why I put Braum in the back line. I, I need a reposition. When I played a lot of these games, I was like semi AFK. I was playing like two games on my second monitor, but hopefully in your games, you can, uh, you need to pay attention to the full time. Uh, the reason why I do it my way is because I'm like at a lower rating than I normally play at. So I'm not like taking the game as like seriously because the opponents are just a bit easier. Uh, I already have a Quicksilver, so even though this is a lot of swords, which is good if I go for like Siphon and Olaf, it's like, do I want two Quicksilvers? I kind of want more utility items here. There's a Bloodthirster, I could use that. Shiv isn't bad either. You also don't want to reroll too much because then you end up losing gold. And when I'm rerolling, especially since I don't have Olaf 3 yet, you definitely don't want to spend too much gold rerolling your treasure dragon. You'd much rather spend it like rolling for units. If I already had the Olaf 3 star, then of course you could roll a bunch on there because uh, you're just trying to get perfect items. So whenever you're playing reroll, you need to think about when to all in. All inning is just spending all your gold rolling down to zero. I probably should do it right now because we're at 44 life. Even though we're in third place, 44 life isn't that much. So I definitely make a mistake here. I need to be rolling to zero right now because we're only two Olaf's off from getting the the comp that we or like the upgrade that we want, which is pretty close. Like two units off for a three star three cost definitely is what I would consider. You generally get around like, I think every 10 gold you roll, you get around one unit of the copy that you want. Um, if you're at like the right level for whatever unit you're looking for, it's somewhere around that ratio. Um, so it's a decent approximation trick you could kind of use. So technically we'd only need to spend like 20 gold to get them or 26 gold because we need to buy them as well. Uh, obviously the math doesn't always work out because it depends what's left in the pool, how many three costs other people have bought. But again, it's just a general approximation. Again, here I'm one off. Like, I don't know why I'm not rolling down to zero right now. It's like crazy that I'm not. So I swap the items onto Pantheon. Uh, you do want to run Pantheon in this comp. I feel like the warrior build right now it's better in this current meta, but who knows? It might change later on. Uh, but yeah, whatever's meta, you generally want to lean more towards that comp. See, I missed Olaf three star right here. So it's like... <laughs> I just could have had the upgrade in the game. Luckily, my opponents aren't like that strong right now, so I'm able to like get away with making mistakes. That's what I like about this type of video is that um, it shows that like you can make mistakes and still do all right uh, because again, everything's adjusted to whatever level you're playing at or whatever level your opponents are playing at. We get the Diana there, we get Lilia. We're gonna roll a bit more. There's the Olaf three. There's another Lilia. I really should have just nico though and leveled up instead uh, because having the 8th unit definitely does help. The 8th unit gives me the Silas, which gives both Bruiser and Whisper. Whisper is really important. Even if you only have two Whispers, it's still good be because Whispers reduce the armor and magic resistance of the enemy team of whoever your Whisper units are attacking, which is obviously really useful because Olaf does both types of damage. He does a physical damage because... He is a warrior, and he also does magic damage from scale scorn. There's a Yasuo with Giant Slayer. Oh, it got taken. Uh, you could do Pantheon. You could do a tank item. Maybe Thimble Winter was the best item here. I guess we'll just settle for Bramble. Definitely should have ran towards the Thimble Winter, though. Oh, just uh, I fact-checked myself. For the um, reroll odd chances I was talking about for three cost units at level 7, it's around like 12 gold, actually, not 10 gold. So if you roll six times, you approximately will hit the Olaf once every 12 gold. So I dropped the items on Pantheon. Maybe I should have put the Hand of Justice on Yasuo. The thing is, like, I'm more likely to two-star the Pantheon. So I guess once he's two-starred, I'd rather have the items on him because I'm probably not hitting Yasuo two-star this game because I, I just don't have that much gold. I need to level up to level eight. So that's going to cost me, what, like 40 gold? And then, yeah, <laughs> after that, I'll just have 20. Yasuo costs 10 gold to buy because I need two copies of him. So it's, yeah, it's likely not happening. So you could put it on either Pantheon or Yasuo, but in this game, I think Pantheon's a little bit better because I'm probably going to be able to afford the Pantheon. 
Disregard everything I just said, I forgot we still have the champion duplicator, so it should be Yasuo actually, because you could hit one Yasuo, or one more Yasuo. Yeah, I, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I forgot things are on my bench, and I just haven't used the duplicator yet. It's a little awkward, because remember how I said before, champion duplicator, it's one of those items where the earlier you use it, you just get so much more value out of it. And we just had it sitting on our bench for a while, so we just lost a lot of power from that. Holy cow, we got a giant slayer. Giant Slayer is just like probably one of the best late game damage items in the game for obvious reasons too, right? It is, it amplifies your damage based on if the enemy has like over a certain amount of health and obviously because we are in the late game, people have more health so it just like logically makes sense, right? Uh, we did get a reforger. I'm going to go ahead and reforge the RFC on Yasuo because RFC just not that great on him. I wouldn't say it's like horrible, it's definitely playable, but you could definitely get a lot better things. So Fimble Winter, amazing, right? The only thing we didn't want was an ability power item, but ability power, but tank item, utility item, or an attack damage item all would have been good on Yasuo. So that's like three out of the four item categories, the last one being ability power items. So I guess it's like a high chance that we get something good from the Reforger. Okay, so yeah, our Olaf's just too strong at this point, so I think we should win the game from here. The other person has 70 health, so that's quite a bit, but yeah, this um, Deja 2 star, not enough to beat this. Maybe if he had Yasuo too, even then I th still think we win. Um, just because like we have good augments for this. We have three amazing Olaf augments, by the way. We have Preparation. Preparation, one of the best reroll augments in the game, as I said before. We have Triforce. Probably the best augment for any three cost unit, such as Olaf. And then the last one, scope weapons or range weapons, whatever it's called. Really good on Olaf because he gets range, which gives him more safety. And then he also gets more attack speed. Like, there's not much more I could have asked for this game. Uh, okay. Oh, I faced the other person. I thought we were in a 1v1 scenario already. Oh, he's got, he's got 350 of the Lagoon... Lagoon rewards. I think 350 is Tactician's Crown. I think that's when you get it. He should pick it up. I hope he does so we see what it is. So we have a lot of gold now. We could level up now. But what would we even put in? A mage? So you want to play something like Zoe. Zoe would probably be the best mage here. Whenever you can run three mages, you almost always want to play Zoe. Uh, Zoe is bad if you don't have mages, but when you do have mages, she becomes the best support champion in the entire game. Gives your team invulnerability, she CCs the whole board, or she gives you a tank or a bit of damage. It's like, it's just one of the best support uh, champions in the game. The two best Zoe abilities are the CC the whole board with the infinite cyclones, or the invulnerability one. And since she casts twice with the mage trait, she's pretty much always gonna at least get one of them. I think it's like a 75% chance to, to get one of them, uh, which is obviously really good. So we could get Yasuo 2 here. I should just roll and then complete it. But I think I was just lazy here. You definitely want to roll to zero right now. Uh, maybe we could get both Yasuo and Zoe 2 star. Wow, we're still looking for Pantheon as well. I did not realize that. Okay, so he's got the Guild Bearers. He's got Zaya. He has very good Zaya items. But as long as we're able to kill the Shivana. We're good to go and we're able to do that perfect his shivana did nothing that game holy cow 339 damage on the shivana that's insane i've never seen the shivana do that little damage again same thing as last turn just roll down here because you're going for the kill right now i don't mean kill as in kill him this round but i mean like everyone's low life so you just want to uh, make sure they get even lower before they spike after neutral rounds so it's like pretty important to win this round because let's say we let's say we do win this round right and he goes to like what five health or maybe 10 health that means even if he gets a big upgrade after the rift herald and for example on his bench he's got a bunch of zayas let's say he magically hits zaya three you'll still have a good chance to win the game because you only need to beat him one time so there's always like stupid fight RNG that happens in TFT and you could just cheese that to win the game, right? So winning the last round before is just like super important solely because of that reason. 
Uh, it allows you, it pretty much prevents him from having any breathing room at all. Because uh, even if you have the stronger team, you're not guaranteed to win the game. Because, again, fight RNG is a thing that exists. Even if your board's stronger than someone else's. Don't ask me why I just did that Diana thing. I wanted to give it to, I think, Yasuo, but it, it just didn't happen. Because <laughs> whenever you have a two-star legendary, you want three items on them. Uh, even if it's not the perfect item. But I didn't like swap my team in time, and I wanted the buff to hit my Olaf, so I win like the game that way. But yeah, even if you have a stronger team than someone, it doesn't mean you win the game. It just means you're more likely to win each round. So say you have like an 80% or 90% win rate on like a, in like a fight, you still could lose, right? And and that's why HP is important in TFT. But in this game, again, we just did reroll Olaf. Uh, we kind of committed to him. In the middle, after we had Triforce, we saw what units we were hitting a bit more, and then we just went from there and rerolled for him. All right, let's get into the gold game. So gold's when people start to take the game a little more seriously. Maybe they played a bunch more of the set. Maybe they follow like some guides or something like that. This is typically when people start like uh, doing a little bit more of that. Uh, so we get a start here. We get two Karmas, but Sword's on one of the Karmas, so we don't really want her that badly. I'm going to pick up the Malphite just so we have some sort of tank in the early game. Uh, but yeah, nothing too great in our shop so far. We get another Sword. Wow. <sighs> that one's tough. So we could complete this Karma and then build a Giant Slayer. That is a possibility. The reason why is because, like, Giant Slayer, while it is an item you can slam, it's not the best early game item, but you still get a little bit of value from it. But another option you could do, which is probably what I was thinking here, is something like a Death Blade. Uh, Death Blade, obviously good for AD compositions with a bow. You could do, like, Runon's Death Blade. Probably a decent combo. Uh, but let's see the last thing we get here. Uh, it's a lot of units. I just don't find them that useful for what items we have. All right, so we have two Mirage units on our board. Hallucinate is there. It is a possibility. Ricochet, also really good because uh, we have a lot of attack damage items. It's probably Ricochet, but we go for the Hallucinate there. Um, it's easier to do Hallucinate because you already have the, or not easier, I should say it's less risky to do it because we already have two Mirage units, whereas we have zero Cannoneers. So you really could go either way, but I think with these items, if you're playing like super optimally, I think the Cannoneers is like slightly better. So we have Executioner's Edge for this uh, Mirage, so that means our units are going to deal a lot of damage. Uh, so we want to focus on more of our damage carries instead of our tank units. Uh, again, it's like very small difference, I'd say overall, but I think Hallucinate is, or like going Mirage here is slightly better. I hate, or I, I shouldn't say I hate, I sometimes don't like Augments because it forces you into a build very early into the game, and this is definitely one of those examples. Wow, our Karma actually clutched that. Because <laughs> it's like we didn't have a super strong start for either of those comps, but like we're kind of like pushed into it. Uh, I guess we could have rerolled, but I don't want to use my reroll or my augment reroll this early either. You really only want to use your augment reroll if you really have like truly horrible options, and I don't think we had truly horrible options. Uh, all right, so <laughs> at least our Yones are doing a ton of damage here together. We need like a two-star tank. Right now we have a random Karma, which obviously isn't helping us at all. Uh, a warrior would help as well. I'm not sure why Jax isn't a warrior. When you think of Jax, like warrior trait would make sense on him, but he's a Jade Shimmer Scale Bruiser for some reason. So nothing much in the shop here to do, so we'll skip this. Okay, an Astral Player. But he's got a random Sejuani. Can we even kill the Sejuani? That's my question. We're doing a split focus right now, which isn't good. We're hitting like three different units. And whenever he has three different tanks, especially one is a Vladimir, which heals, you definitely don't want to be splitting focus. Maybe I should have kept my, or should have kept my Yones together positioning wise and splitting them up is a mistake. Uh, the reason why I wanted to split them up though is like kind of the same reason why he splits his up. 
If I have a hallucinate, it means my units take reduced damage at the start of the round for six seconds. So you kind of want to split tanking as well. It's um, That's why I am positioned that way, even though I'm kind of complaining about it. So what item do I want here? I have an extra sword. Another giant slayer wouldn't be so bad. We could start building rage blade, i.e. isn't that bad either. Uh, Zeke's is pretty good. Uh, we have a lot of different options here. We could also just start building tank items, so going for Negatron Cloak, Armor, or Belt works too. So here we can decide to level up or stay and like just kind of coast along. I think leveling up is better because we want to play the Wukong for uh, Warrior. You could argue like, oh, we could take out one of the Yones, but since we have Hallucinate up, he just becomes like that much better of a unit. Zeke's definitely is possible here. I think it's like fine to slam. I can put the Wukong next between the between the Yones and just Zeke him up right now. If we were on a win streak, I definitely would do that, like 100%, no doubt. But since we're not, we could kind of chill to see what items we get. Maybe we get a good tank item from the belt uh, and we could just like wait for that one on the after the neutral rounds. Man, whenever the enemies get low with this Mirage bonus, like you really start killing them really quickly because everything crits at that point. So we get another Leona here that's pretty useful. We also pick up the Lilia for Cavaliers. The main tank in the Mirage composition is Nunu, so that's why you want Cavaliers. Generally, it's going to be Sejuani or Hecarim. It's Hecarim because he's AoE CC and a four cost unit, Sejuani because of Guild. There are actually a lot of different Mirage builds. You could do like full Mirage, like go for like six or eight of them, or you could go for the Guild one, which is, or Guild Deja, which runs like half Mirage, half Guild units. And then the other one is the one with Cavalier. So you run like a bunch of Mirages and then as many Cavaliers as possible. That is probably the biggest upgrade in the history of upgrades, because we really needed like a solid tank and Leona's exactly just that. Uh, okay, we get, ooh, Warmog's pretty good. Let's see what else we get. Rod, uh, Rod's good for Rageblade, but we don't have the, oh, oh. Okay, now I think we definitely double Zeke's. Whenever you have, like, five item components on your bench, you, like, almost have to build an item. Generally, my rule is, if you're playing Flex, four or more items, you want to build an item. Sorry, four or more item components, you want to build an item. But if you have five, like, you 100% have to do at least one of them. It could be Warmogs, though, but I think I'm double Zeking here because it works really well with both Deja in the late game and Yone in the early game. This guy's going Warrior, so he's going for Yones as well, at least in the early game, but he's probably going to sell them later on. So we're not too worried about that. We're also, like, not re-rolling Yone unless we get, like, infinite copies of him in the next two rounds, but I highly doubt it. Uh, probably going to be a Deja carry. So late game specialists, we're not really going for level 9 in this build. We want to roll at level 8. Preparation, that's for reroll. We're not rerolling. So Electro Charge, it is. Electro Charge also probably works pretty well with Hallucinate because uh, we get a bunch of tankiness at the start, and then Electro Charge is great on tanks. So yeah, Electro Charge there. We level up, just drop in this random Karma. I know we're at 5 Jade. Oh, uh, that gives us 5 Jade which gives us like the next threshold thingy. One thing to keep in mind, don't copy this Yone positioning. The reason why Yone's in the front is because I have Hallucinate. If you're playing Mirages without Hallucinate, which is like 90% of your Mirage games, because it's like a rare augment to get, uh, you want to put Yone in like the second row so he doesn't tank right away and have Leona tank everything. Or if you have like a healing item, you could put Yone in the front line, but like sandwich him between a bunch of units so he doesn't get fully focused. Uh, but again, we have Hallucinate, so that's why he's up in the front without like that much protection. Ooh, that is a interesting astral augment. And he's got like uh, two items on Lux. Oh, this person's at 100 health, no wonder why. <laughs> oh no, Yone died, so we can't win anymore. If Yone lived, I think we could have won. Ah, maybe Shio can do it. Not the best Shio U items, though. Come on, knock her up. And now we lose this one. Ah, that's okay. It sucks, because, like, 
our streaks just kept getting broken this game so it's a little unlucky so i i guess that's a good thing so i could show you guys. if i like win streaked every game it wouldn't be like that fun to watch not fun but like also not knowledgeable to watch so it's better this way we 100 percent want the bow here if we can't get bow i'd probably get a belt um i guess chain works as well because chains on a four cost unit nope that got taken as well so since we're going for deja Tier building Archangels is good uh, because you already get attack speed from Zeke, so Rage Blade is not as necessary. So either direction is good. You could go for the tank item or go for Archangels here. Um, Archangels again, like whenever you have this Mirage variant, which is Executioner's Edge, it makes it so every one of your attacks critically strikes whenever they're below a certain amount of health, and Archangels is probably the perfect item for that because it stacks up throughout the fight so once they get low you'll have a bunch of archangel stacks and then you'll just be like critting them with like amplified damage and yeah also rage blade again not as necessary this game on deja because we have a bunch of attack speed from the zeeks already so there's yone the only other thing i would consider again is just tank items because tank items allows your team to like ramp up damage to get them low and then uh, get the crit bonus strike or bonus damage. Uh, Lee Sin's so annoying. And he's got like the best item combo. Holy cow. And Eye of the Storm. Eye of the Storm is the best augment for Lee Sin as well, I'm pretty sure. We're able to kill him, but still lose a round. That's okay. We're not on a streak, so I'm not like that disappointed. We're pretty high health also. So we're in like a decent shape going into the mid game. So again, like you might be wondering, what do I do if I don't like hit all the Mirage units? Like some games you magically have a Deja at this point already. We have the Shio Yu, um, but we're just running Shio Yu as a random tank for now. Uh, so you could always play random units in the middle of the game before you get your final comp. You don't have to play your final comp right at the start of the game. Uh, that's called like just getting lucky. There's not really too much more to add to that. We do get a Nunu. Uh, we can't really add anything else here. We don't really have any other synergies to put in, so I'll just drop in Nunu. He does still get the Hallucinate buff, so it's like not bad. This is the Lagoon guy. I've not seen many Nyla carry builds. I, I do want to see it because four cost assassins just haven't been a thing for a while. Last set it was Talon. No one really played like a Talon carry. He was always second fiddle. And I'm afraid Nyla's turning into the same thing, but I hope not. Maybe later on someone discovers a good Nyla build. So Sunfire Boar, Jeweled Lotus, better together. Jeweled Lotus, not needed because we have Executioner's Edge. Sunfire Board, it's just a well-rounded one, but better together. We already have two aura items, so it's like, what else could we have asked for here? It's just 100% hands down, like one of the best things we could have gotten here. And it gives us a tank item. I, d I didn't even mention that either. We could just drop that on Nunu. Nunu is our main tank and just chill after that. I actually put it on Shio Yu for now. Yeah, because Shio Yu's in the front. I could I'm 100 percent selling the Shio Yu. I could just grab him later. Or sorry, swap the item later. I should probably put my Yone where the Shio Yu is at this point, though. I think I should swap their positioning. Oh no. Does he have this? Nice. Uh, so generally, you want to roll earlier on, but we have a bunch of health right now, so I'm not that concerned about like protecting myself in the mid game. Uh, but if you were lower, if you're like 50 or 40 HP like the other guys in the lobby, you definitely want to roll on like 4-1. Especially since Mirage can hit a bunch of good upgrades, you could get like a bunch more warriors. We have good items for warriors that we could play in the mid game. We definitely want to replace this Karma with something better. Uh, so we might hit a random upgrade on that for like a 2 or 3 cost unit. And sometimes you might just luck out, get a Deja 1, and call it a day from there. Nunu 2, also a great thing to get. So lots of different things you could upgrade your team with. But we have a bunch of like random units that work, like kind of just making work in the meantime with this like random Shio Yu. Uh, so it's not like horrible the situation we're in right now. And again, since we're at 82 life, we didn't really need to roll that badly on stage 4-1. We have a chain vest and a glove. We definitely want to finish a tank item here, so probably the Negatron Cloak. Uh, if not, uh, we're not able to get that. I guess we could build a Thieves Gloves. 
We could also go for a locket because we have better together. I feel like I should have gotten the, the Thieves Gloves though. I'm not sure why I got the rod here. Uh, so we could level up. Again, we followed the rule before of staying above 30 gold. We end up hitting a random Shiou, and we'll just play it for now. You know, why not? Add in Rakan for Mystic, and I guess we call it a day. So with Better Together, obviously you want a bunch of aura items, but we already have three of them, so we don't need to build the locket, because honestly, even a buffed locket in the late game, it's just like, you'd rather have a different item. It just provides much more benefits to your team. I wouldn't say it's like horrible to slam the locket because like, oh, maybe we're wind streaking or something like that, but I just don't think it benefits us that much to build it, even with better together at this point in the game. I generally think of locket as like an early game item or if you need protection for your whole team, such as like an assassin comp. Also, since we have a lot of health, we can kind of greed for the late game. So we could definitely see what we get off the treasure dragon before deciding what to go into fully. Um, again, it's a luxury that you don't have every game, but when you do have it, you definitely should take advantage of it. Okay, Chaos Dragon. I, I really hate the Chaos Dragon. Not Sorry, I shouldn't say hate it. But whenever I get a hard decision to make on the Treasure Dragon, that's when I don't like it because it's... Um, sometimes it gives you really garbage things, but sometimes it gives you really good things. And you just don't know how much you need to roll before you get like a good option again. Um, but let's roll a bit here. Ooh, there's a Deja, so we could swap their team out a little bit. Um, yeah, definitely want to get rid of that. Get rid of that karma. Uh, the training dummy. I don't know why it doesn't just like apply automatically, but you have to like put it on a unit before you get it. Ionic Spark, incredible for this team comp. Probably one of the best things you can get. The reason why is because Deja does magic damage, Nunu does magic damage, and I needed a tank item. It does all three of those. Um, and then this last thing, I guess I could Jeweled Gauntlet Bramble Vest. You don't want Jeweled Gauntlet whenever you play Executioner's Edge Mirage, but the other item choices we had would be Shroud of Stillness and Locket. Shroud is kind of cringe. I'm too lazy to position using it, especially like at this rating. I'm not like scouting every turn. Uh, you definitely should scout pretty often if you're like playing for real. Um, but yeah. But even though Jeweled Gauntlet isn't the best thing in this particular Mirage variant, it's still an ability power item on Deja, so it's still like good to have. And right, there's Terra. We could play Terra over Shio Yu eventually. There's a Leona 2. Uh, the reason why I'm rolling is because it's like still on the early stages of stage 5, and you kind of want to use your gold at that point in the game. I should not have sold the Terras, just keep that in mind. I definitely made a mistake there. I probably should have rolled to around like 20 or 10 gold here uh, after I hit the two Terras and the two Dejas. But I, I was slow on rolling and then now I'm just greeting back up to 50 gold. But you definitely shouldn't do that. That's a mistake because we got like pretty decent hits and I just like sold the two Terras for some random reason. Oh, Terra actually should be really good with Electro Charge because it just gives like a bunch of your units tankiness so you just get more value from that. There's a Sejuani. I don't, like, what would you rather have, guys? Sejuani 2-star or, like, Terra 2-star? I'd rather have the Terra 2-star, right? Like, I don't know why I swap my team in this manner. It, like, sounds so simple when you say it out loud, but sometimes when you're in-game, you just, like, get confused because you're thinking about other things. Um, and, and then you just end up doing, like, a really bad play. Which is why reviewing your old games is pretty important, and that's kind of what we're doing right now. Those are interesting siphon items. I feel like that should be like doing much better than he is. Like Warrior Siphon, that sounds amazing, right? Because he's attack damage based. And then he has a healing augment. He's got like, I feel like his items are really good. But I don't know, just didn't work out against my team, I guess. Uh, this third Zeke's would be pretty interesting. That way we could swap the tank item, the Protector's Vow onto our Nunu and then sell our Shiyou eventually, and then triple Zeke's. That sounds pretty fun. Um, second Archangels could be doable as well. And uh, we don't really need the third Bramble Vest, or the second Bramble Vest. I guess I could use that for my Terra that I that I sold, but I guess it's sold now, so we can't really, <laughs> can't really use it. I should have picked up Idis. Idis is 
Idis 2 would be more useful than Shio Yu 2. Okay, there we go. We get the Deja now. Getting a Nunu 2 would be helpful, but it's not like the be all end all. Just a note, instead of getting the second Archangels, I could have also just sold my Yone and put the Giant Slayer onto my Deja, but I think because I because of the way this game played out, I could save the Giant Slayer for the Yasuo that I hopefully will get. Hopefully. Like here, I should sell Rel to get up to 50 gold. Again, what would you rather have? Two-star Rel, two-star Sejuani, or a two-star Terra? It's just like not even a question. But, you know, mistakes happen. Not that big of a deal. This guy has... Oh, it's the Astral player. But instead of... Oh, Skarner 3, Nidalee 3. Not Lux 3 carry. Interesting. Also no Aesol. That uh, feels bad. So we're able to knock him out there. Like, as you guys can see, as we've been going through these games, like we've been going up a level every single game uh, the players are getting better but they're still not playing perfectly so it's like you definitely have a lot of room to climb uh, you just have to realize what your mistakes are what what mistakes your opponents are making and then kind of just slowly fix them over time some people they get it faster than others so you might know some people that like oh they like climb super quickly maybe in like 20 games they got to like this rating or whatever uh, but everyone learns at their own pace so you just have to realize that too uh, so Jace wouldn't be horrible if we we're running Sedge, but I really need like a, a better replacement for Shioyu. Giovanna wouldn't be horrible, but not that great. Uh, I also want a Yasuo. A Static Shiv, I guess I could drop that on Yon. Did I block my Shioyu? Almost. I should be careful about positioning this. Okay. Wow. <laughs> His graves walked right into our Deja's ult. Oh my goodness, that... Wow, that Lee Sin almost just turbo smurfed on him. Uh, you see how strong Eye of the Storm is on Lee Sin? Also that item combo of IEJG is just incredible what power it brings. Like, holy cow. Like, my team is, like, pretty strong. I'd say, like... I mean, we have a... Two, two two star dragons with like three items we have like tons of items on our team we have like pretty much one of the best augments for like what we have right now and like we almost lost to that again should be buying terra but i think since i didn't realize it before i'm not going to realize it now in this game but again do want to eventually sell this sell the shio you probably should pick up at least Ida's here um i guess we have shivana pair we don't really have Shivana items though, but Giant Slayer Static Shiv is good enough. This person has three star Senna. Wow, that Senna is attacking real fast. Oh, he's got like 12. Is that 12 Rage Wing? It might be. Ouch. Okay, that hurts. That hurts. It feels bad seeing a Zaya 2 with no items though, but he's, he's going set carry, which is fair enough. Please buy the Terras. I, I should go get a time machine and like smack myself in the face a bunch. Okay, I, I like this guy. Bard's super good whenever you play Deja, for obvious reasons. It gives mana. You want to cast more, so like, what else do you want from life? Um, I could probably put Nunu on one of the the Earth squares uh, because he jumps, or Hecarim because they both jump to the front. Uh, I guess Yasuo getting it, or not Yasuo, Yone getting it is fine too. Uh, yeah, definitely want to put the Protector's Vow on my Terra. You always want to put Protector's Vow on someone who actually takes damage. And also, it's based on how much health you have, so dragons just have more health. Um, it gives like a shield based on how much health you have, I'm pretty sure. We could get another Terra here, especially with a Bramble. I should just get that. That's a, that's a no-brainer. Unless I wanted to deny the Shivana, which could have been a possibility as well, but because the other person's Rage Wing. I forget if he has Shivana too already. Oh, he hit Yasuo too? Unlucky. We we definitely want Yasuo. So we'll roll a bit here. Not hitting much, which is fine. I probably don't need the Rakan anymore. Rakan was good because it gave us Mystic before and Guardian, but I think at this point it's like not really that necessary. Oh, he does have Shivana too already. Okay, I, I should probably just sell the Shivanas. And I, I guess I could go transition my team into like three or four dragons. That wouldn't be horrible, you know? I could definitely do something like Aoshin with these 
items. Actually, no. Aeotian needs mana regeneration. I have two Zeeks though, so maybe you could get away with Aeotian. This is tricky. Aeotian, it's almost mandatory to have either a Spear of Shojin or a Rage Blade, because if not, he just won't cast. But with double Zeeks, maybe he can cast. And like two tier items from the Archangel. So maybe you do something like double Archangels and a Static Shiv on your Aeotian just so he casts. Uh, even though Jeweled Gauntlet does do a lot of damage, I'm not denying that, but you really just need Aeotian to cast once, and then after that, like, your team should win. If your team doesn't win after Aeotian casts, like, your team's just sucks. Like, <laughs> not much else to say there. So, like, you, the first cast is just so important. I'm getting Shrouded, which is expected because we're running an aura item. It's hard to shift three units when they only have to shift one unit. So you're pretty much just always going to get get shrouded whenever you face a whenever you run zeeks uh, we're really not in a good spot here we're losing a lot of fights but he has lower health so maybe we can get away with like winning one cheese round or something like that especially in stage seven i believe player damage is 20 so he just has one life at this point whereas we have two maybe three if we get like really lucky so the way player damage works is that you take a flat amount of damage per round plus whatever units are left over. Uh, for the leftover units, it's like two damage per unit up to 10, and then it's one after that. So if there's five units alive at the end of the round, you take 10 damage from, uh, from unit damage plus the round damage. And then if you have six units alive, you take 11 damage from units plus, and then you add on the round damage after that. Okay, so obviously triple Zeke's is good. It's probably one of the better things we could have gotten. Uh, the only other thing we could have wished for was maybe a tank item, but we really need this Yasuo. Maybe that could get us back into this game. I should sell three of my dragons and keep rolling down, but I don't for some reason. We get shrouded again. Again, it's expected. It's not really like something to sweat over, you know, but you could do like fast swapping if you like really don't want to get shrouded which technically is optimal, but um, I'm a bit lazy this game. Oh, we were able to sneak out a win. Wait a minute. Did they change the round damage for stage seven? I could have sworn it was 20 per round. Interesting. Okay, there's the Aoshin. Again, like, I'm not 100% sure if he can cast with those items. Especially since the enemy team... He wipes through my tanks like paper. Maybe it could... Uh, I, don't, I don't really know. I guess it's for sure better than the than the random... Uh, what's it called? Yon Leona that I was running. Well, we'll see if it casts here. Oh, and I'm getting shrouded. Okay, that's really rough. I don't think he casts. <laughs> that's a little rough. It was easier to get him to cast last set because you get um, the electrocute stuff. Not electrocute. The... Tempest, wow, there's my Yasuo. Because Tempest gives, uh, used to give attack speed, which helped him cast faster, but now Tempest gives more damage. So he actually casts slower at this point in time. Why did I, did I really skip over that? Holy cow. I don't know what I'm doing this game, guys. I'm literally griefing. I'm not sure why I sold, sold the Yasuo. I'm so confused right now. I'm so sorry, guys. At least we hit Shivana 2 finally, but I'm just not sure what Shivana 2 like brings to my team. Obviously Shivana's a two-star dragon. I'm not saying Shivana's a bad unit, but I would have thought that adding in like a Yasuo would do a lot because it gives me a bunch of CC and he's just like a good damage unit in general. I actually forgot if we won this game or not. Okay, so item here, probably a Shivana or tank item. Shivana wants AP, so we're probably going something tanky. Maybe that, um, what's it called? Gargoyle Stone Plate. I also skipped out on buying Aoshins for some reason. I'm not really too sure why. Again, maybe it's because I thought I couldn't cast. There's the Hecarim, but like... Do I even need Nunu or Hecarim at this point? That's what I'm wondering. So it's the last round, so you just sell everything. Got that on him. Is Bard the best thing I can run at this point? I guess so. 
We're going to try to dodge the shroud. Maybe we can win that way. Okay, he didn't move. Probably because we didn't move the past, like, 10 fights. He's like, okay, he's not moving, so he could keep the shroud in the same spot. So maybe he wasn't scouting as hard as he could have been. Is that enough, though? Looks like it is. Okay, it's just a shroud diff, then. Wait. Okay, yeah, it's just a shroud diff. Holy cow, that was a close game. That's why positioning is important, guys, but some, some games I'm just too lazy to do it, especially if I'm, like, not at my regular rating, because uh, the season just started, so I'm just trying to climb a bit from, like, the, the start, you know? But decent game overall. Let's go on into the Platinum game now. All right, let's hop into game number five. This one is the Platinum game. So we started off with the Tear and a Negatron. Not the best item combo, so we'll see how we can make use of this here. We got a bow so we can build a Static Shiv or a Runon's early game. That'll really depend on what comp we're trying to go for. So we get Loot Master, Mirage, or Three's Company. Hmm. I really like Loot Master. I feel like it's one of the best augments in the game. You just get so many items. We have a couple of guilds already. We have a Twitch and a Sejuani. So we could just go ahead and grab that right there. We get two Twitches, put the Sejuani in, put the Twitch in. We have Ezreal for Swift Shot. Do we level up? We could level up. We would definitely want to build an item here. Either the Runons or Static Shiv. Since we're going Zaya, maybe Runons is slightly better. But they're about approximately the same. We could also not level up to keep gold. Um... Yeah, this is when you need to scout the other boards to see whether you would win or lose each of these rounds. So we're against someone super, super weak. We, we're all one-starred, so I kind of wanted to lose streak this game. But since we faced this really weak guy, like we might as well just, yeah. <laughs> Loot Master isn't exactly a win streak augment. It gives you a power spike later into the game. But, you know, if someone else is like kind of open forwarding as well, then... You can't really control too much about it, right? Okay. This new shop, we have the Sejuani. That's about all we are interested in here. So since we won the first round and we already built an item, I'll level up and throw in an extra Sedge. This guy had Portable Forge, so we are going to lose this one for sure. There's no way we're killing that Malphite ever. We just don't have enough damage for it. So we're going to have like a no streak type of game. So we're going to have a little bit less gold, maybe like middling in terms of HP. But it doesn't mean it's the end of the world right there. We could pre-level here, and I think we went ahead and did that. Uh, whenever you can't make a gold threshold, and you're in the early game and you can reach the next level, sometimes you can pre-level, or sometimes it's worth it to if you want to get more expensive units. Uh, I think I'm looking for some sort of Cavalier, so that's Lilia and Nunu that I can get from pre-leveling. Uh, maybe just get a better carry, because right now we only have one copy of Ezreal. If we had two copies of Ezreal, maybe we don't pre-level, so that we have a higher chance of getting Ezreal 2-star. But maybe we could just swap out into a different item holder entirely. We have a tier. We could go for a Static Shiv if we want a win streak. We could go for a Redemption if we want a tank item. We could go Protector's Vow if we want a tank item. Or Hand of Justice if we want to stay flexible. All those options, I'd say, are pretty decent. I went ahead and went for the Protector's Vow. It's just a solid item in the meta right now. You don't have to slam it right away. Oh, there we go. Varus was another person I was like you could potentially get because he's a swift shot. By the way, in this game, I made a big mistake. I forgot that they change swift shot. So in the previous set, swift shot was a two, four, six synergy. So you needed two, four, or six swift shots to meet the requirements, but they changed it to two, three, four, five. And so you technically could still run Ezreal in this game. But I just didn't realize that because this was towards the beginning of the set and I just completely forgot they changed stuff. It just goes to show you really got to read stuff uh, to <laughs> and make sure you're taking advantage of everything in the game. New shop. Mm, nothing too special here. We're not locked into guild, by the way. A lot of people, they get this loot master thing and they force guild. And we kind of are doing that right now. But a lot of other comps can splash in guild without any issue. <clears throat> For example, you could do the Mirage guild build that we were talking about earlier with Deja. Uh, you could do guild with Zaya. There are a lot of different options that you have. You don't have to go deep into guild. Though I 
think if my memory serves me correctly, we do try to go for guild this game. It's not a requirement by any means. You just need two guild to keep the Ogmen active. So we got a Sejuani 2 there, that's really good. Oh, and in case you guys did not notice, notice how after the, the item carousel, we didn't slam our item right away. That's because the Loot Master Augment gives an item component every four player combat rounds, and that combat round was happening right after Carousel, so I just decided to wait one more round before I actually slammed the Protector's Bow. Again, that's just because I was gonna figure out more items that I would get later on, um, and then after I got the extra chain vest, I'm like, all right, let me make the Protector's Bow, because I don't really like tier that much in Zaya comps, which is what I'm leaning towards. Yeah, so here, definitely, just play Ezreal over the extra Sejuani. Again, forgot that three Swift Shot was a thing in the new set. But he's running Dark Flights. Ah, oh, man. It's such a good comp. This comp is probably getting nerfed. And as you guys can see here, he just gets four items at the start of the game, and there's just not much you can do about it. So out of these augments, Second Wind is good. Stand United is good with Guild because you could go wide. Going wide means going a bunch of different traits and not going deep into one of them. Uh, Electro Charge, good because we have tank items. Honestly, all three of these options are all like slightly above average, I would say. Uh, so you could go with any of these. I wouldn't be mad about it. We went ahead and leveled up to level 6 and just dropped an extra unit in. Uh, we're still at 50 gold. So even though the extra unit we're playing in isn't that great, because generally when you level up to play the extra unit, you're like, oh, let me put in something that adds in an extra synergy. We didn't get that here, but since we're not losing interest, it's like no harm, no foul. This guy's got Siphon already. Oh, it's the Malphite guy from before. Uh, we are yeah, definitely losing this. We just don't have good two stars. We have the Sejuani, that's about it. This guy's got Braum 2, Malphite 2, and he has a Siphon uh, 1 star, so it's a little difficult to break through that. We didn't quite get the same rolls as this person did. All right, so we do have 3 Cavalier, though, which is okay. It's not, like, game-breaking, but it's decent enough for now. We're facing a Zippy. <laughs> Zippy should be a Cavalier. It looks like one, right? I know it's a dragon, but, like, I mean, come on. <laughs> it's pretty much Kled but a little different from previous sets. Oh wow, this person's got Zaya already. We want Zaya for sure, because we already built the Runons. When you build Runons, you're pretty much locked into some sort of attack damage composition. So you know how I said, oh, maybe you could go for Mirage Guild? Well, you can't really build Runons with, uh, with Deja, right? You could do it with maybe Yone or Yasuo, but even then it's not like one of their better items. So it's not that worth it. Only do it if you're like really getting the champions for free. So here, a lot of options. I would have preferred the belt for like a Sunfire Cape. Bramble isn't bad. We also have a Rod, so maybe we could go for like a Rage Blade with Bow, but none of those items exist here. So we're just gonna grab the sword to try to get a Xyle item later on. And then we get a Rod from the Loot Master. That's really not good. So we do not have good items this game. So we're gonna see how we, I guess, manage that and try to make it not horrible. So first things first, in the Zyab comp, you really only have one use of rods. They either go on, sorry, two uses. They either go on Shivana, but you're not guaranteed to get a Shivana in your game, or it's for a Rage Blade. So one of the rods I'm gonna save for Rage Blade. The other, I'm just gonna slam a Hextech Gunblade. Healing is good on Zyab. Would I prefer a Bloodthirster? Of course, but look at the state of the game right now. We're at 48 life, and all the other games we played so far, we are like 70 or above life starting on stage 4-1. We're like way below that right now, so we need to be more aggressive in slamming our items. So this is how our playstyle changes based on the outcome of each game. All right, there's a Rengar. I don't even know if we want to sacrifice a unit. We'd want to sacrifice the Protector's Vow, but Sejuani's are only two-star units, so it's a little awkward right now. I do end up sacrificing it. I'm not sure if this is correct. It's probably incorrect. Maybe I could have just played an extra Braum or something like that. Or just played the extra Rel instead of this Rengar, because Dark Flight doesn't really give too much to me. Because uh, it sacrifices my strongest unit, so that's not really worth it, right? Uh, so we get Demolish here, of course, because one of the mistake, two, my team is generally weak already, even without the mistake. So we would have lost this round probably no matter what. Uh, but maybe we would have lost by like one less unit or something like that. So we are at... 38 life, sub 40. So again, completely different from all the other games we played so far. 
items are bad, you know, sometimes this happens in TFT. Even with Guildmaster, we're getting bad items, it, it, it hurts a little bit. So whenever you're in these situations, you need to play a little more aggressively. So I'm either doing a full sack to fast 8 on stage 4-2, or I'm rolling at level 7 on 4-1. Uh, it depends how much gold you get in this round. Okay, so we did get the Rage Blade, that's pretty good. Uh, so we're definitely building that, definitely building the Bramble Vest. There's the Deja. Maybe I should play Deja just like temporarily until I get Zaya. It's probably a mistake not buying the Deja and trying to play it here. Um, especially, I guess we don't have Nunu yet, but if we had a Nunu, you would want to play it for sure. I think even now I should probably have sold the Varus and just played Deja. Uh, again, the items aren't great, but we're just waiting for Zaya to pretty much run our team and a one star dragon is definitely better than a one star three cost unit oh this guy's got all my nunus he's got nunu two star he's got a lot of two stars actually all right so we are at 24 not good let's see what our augment is throw the hunt archive cyber ah oh, man so cybernetic shield not that great the reason why i had to pick the augment really quickly is because i have to roll right now so that's why I didn't take too much time thinking, but let's go back a little bit. So Toma Traits, not that great either. Uh, there isn't really any great Tome for Zaya apart from Guild Spatula, but it's really but it's really weird to kind of like bank on that. The other one that could be useful is maybe Cavalier Spatula, but there aren't really too many outs on that end. So if this was Cybernetic Implants, which gives health and attack damage, that would definitely be good. But Cybernetic Shell, uh, you don't really want that while it's not useless, it's not that useful, so that's why I'm avoiding that right now. Uh, Thrill the Hunt, not that great because we already have a healing item in Hextech Gunblade, so for sure I should have re-rolled here. But let's get back into what I did. Again, I needed to roll this turn so I didn't have time to fully think about the augment. So I'm just going to roll down, try to find some upgrades and play random units until we could get like a semblance of like a team here. So Varus 2, that's a great sign. Varus could be a good item holder until I get Zaya 2. And finally, there's a Zaya, but again, Varus 2 is better. Especially since I do not have Rage Wings right now. I should probably buy her though, so uh, probably sell Rengar to pick up the Zaya. I should actually just play Zaya right away because, again, this game I forgot that they changed Swift Shot, so it's a 2, 3, 4, 5. I thought I needed 4 Swift Shot to make it work, but again, you live and you learn. Bramble probably goes on. Actually, I should have put that on Lee Sin. Uh, the reason why is because I'm selling Lee Sin, so he could be an item holder until I get a Hecarim, because Hecarim is probably going to be the main tank of this comp, or Nunu, depending on like which one you get first. Obviously, Hecarim's better because he's a four cost unit, but I'd rather have a two star Nunu than a one star Hecarim. But Varus is actually doing a bit of work here. Oh man, not able to finish that off. We're on like, we're low health, but we didn't lose streak, so this is like one of the worst situations to be in. Obviously, we're on a losing streak right now, but right now the losses are hitting hard, whereas in stage 2 when you lose streak, they, they don't hit that hard at all. Um, let's roll down a bit. Varus 2 is better than Zaya 1, but uh, did I end up selling this here? I don't, again, I don't have Rage Wing yet, so it's really not worth it. I do want this Jace as well, because he gives me another guild unit so I should find a way to buy him here and drop him in. Unfortunately he can't really use too many of these items. I guess he could use a Hextech Gunblade. It's not the best on him. I prefer Tank Jace right now over Damage Jace. So you kind of maybe build like one damage item or maybe like a Titan's Resolve on him because it's kind of like both a tank and a damage item. But yeah Jace is in an awkward spot right now. Hopefully they change him in the in the coming patches. You know, the Hextech Gunblade isn't doing too badly on the Varus. It is healing up the rest of my team. It's not completely useless. So on this carousel, we have a Negatron, so we probably want a Chain Vest to build a Gargoyle Stoneplate. Bard is also useful, because Bard is a guild unit that I want. So this one's a toss-up between the two. You could go either or, I'm pretty sure. You could afford to be a little greedy on your items whenever you have Loot Master, because you're going to be getting more item components than everyone else. I'm just going to go ahead and slam the Zephyr here because we're at like 12 life or whatever. So we just want to make sure we don't die. Even though I don't really like Zephyr that much just because I don't like scout that much. But you should scout. And if you use Zephyr, it's even more important too. Luckily, I Zephyr his Zaya. Wow, he's got Zaya too. Damn. 
He's level 7 and he hits Zaya too. I'm level 8. I hit one Zaya. You know, sometimes the game happens like that. A lot of people ask me, like, what do I do if I don't hit my carry? Everyone else does. Well, you just got to make the most of it. So one mistake I see people make a lot, actually, is you know how I had Zaya 1 and the Varus 2? I see a lot of people sell the Varus 2 early. Sometimes I make that mistake as well. Um, it really depends on what synergies you could really make use of. So Varus, he's not getting any Astral Synergy. Zaya does get a Rage Wing, but two Rage Wing, is that really that much? Maybe if I had like four or six Rage Wing, it would be worth it. But if I just have two Rage Wing, ah, it's probably better to keep the Varus in because he is a two star three cost unit and those units are just much better than a one star four cost. Um, just, it makes sense, right? Cause it's harder to get it. So even though Zaya is part of the final comp, you don't want to put her in until she's properly upgraded. Or if I had like an Ezreal one holding these items, maybe I swap the Zaya in. But if you have a Varus 2, generally not good to swap. We're able to get a nice win there. We are running dangerously low though. We only have like maybe two lives left. Ah, these items aren't horrible. It's not the best though. By the way, I'm making a positioning mistake. I should put Jace like kind of in the back. I shouldn't have him all the way in the front quite yet. Um, I will put the item on him though, and then I'll trap claw my Twitch to buff up my carry. Also, you may have noticed, I forgot to roll during the time we picked the dragon augment, and you definitely needed to roll. <laughs> the reason why I didn't, I, I was just like, I was probably doing something else. Um, but I definitely should have rolled to zero this round and then I ran out of time because I only have half the time in during stage five where I, whereas I could have used all my time if I used the part of stage four where the dragon augment shows up. Um, so definitely another mistake there. Uh, at least we hit Zaya too though. Again, the gunblade, not the best item, but I have to put it on her because we are too low life. If I was like 79 health or 69 health, like the other people in my game, then yeah, you could afford to put the gunblade on Jace and then pick up a third Zaya item off the next carousel. So we got another thing, we got a Negatron. So we're gonna roll to zero now, because we forgot to last turn. There are all the Zayas now, they didn't show up before. Terra might be worth picking up. Okay, nice, we got Hecarim. That's a really big upgrade. We wanna slowly replace our front line because we wanna transfer the items on over to someone else. Maybe transfer it onto Jace or Hecarim. But our team is decent now, we got all our upgrades. This Zippy, Zippy is not that great. If you ever get a Shivana, you definitely want to replace him with that. Uh, apart from that, you could just run random legendaries over Zippy as well. Like perhaps I could have used the Yasuo and played it over Zippy along with like a Soraka maybe just to get more legendary units into the game because Zippy just really isn't that great compared to other options you have. And this guy's going for Deja. He's got pretty good items. Can Zaya finish it off? I don't think so. We're going to get Yasuo'd. Ouch. So we're at 13 now. Or sorry, 6 life now. So we definitely, next life is death. Ah, but there's just really not much to upgrade on our team. The only thing we could do is swap over items. That's really about it. Perhaps looking back at the augment, I should have gotten the cybernetic shell. Because we did have loot master. So that means we get a lot of different items. So... It's a lot of value if you just, uh, what do you call it? Get anything that's cybernetic because you just have more people holding stuff, especially since all my items are split right now. It was just awkward the way we played the game. I made a couple mistakes. I should have put all my tank items onto the Lee Sin instead of the Sejuani. And then I definitely should not have put the Bramble on Zippy as well. Uh, that really messed up my game, but it happens. Morello on Shivana would be insane. Do I go and get it? Someone else got it. <laughs> That's literally the best thing you could ever ask for. So now all these other items suck. Uh, I guess we go Hat or Archangels for Jace. That's, that's about it. Yeah, we'll just slap that on him. We can't really roll because the only thing we could hit is Bard too. I guess we I should have because I'm at 6 life but I don't think it's gonna change much. Bard one versus Bard two, while it is stronger, it's not like that big of a difference. I really dislike rolling only for one thing. Uh, right now, I'm just trying to see if we get lucky in these next two rounds, then maybe I could do something with the gold after that. Um, whenever you're in a bad situation, sometimes you have to play to get lucky to try to recover. 
Luckily, we're able to, I think, win this round. Ooh, nice. I got huge thrill to hunt procs there. And we're able to finish him off. Nice. That's a, that was a Namzi 3. That's awesome. I have not seen too many of those. So the other guy died off, so we're able to get 4th. So again, here, not much incentive to roll, because we have to win a couple of rounds before we actually improve our placements. So we're 4th place right now, but everyone else is at 30 life. So that means we need to beat them like three win like three rounds more. So if we roll now, we might win this round if we hit a bar two, or sorry, not win this round, but increase our chances of winning this round. But we probably won't win the other ones because we'll run out of gold right before the neutral round. So is it worth it? Uh I would say sometimes, but not really. Because again, the whole point of the game is to like improve your placements. So if we're not doing that, then I like to improve the chances of uh, maybe getting third since we already have fourth guaranteed. I guess that game was a good example to see what happens if like your items suck. Maybe augments did, maybe augments didn't really follow up. Uh, other people were hitting my comp faster than I was. You know, you can't really get first place in those games. Obviously, I could have played better. I forgot that three swift shots a thing. My items could have been built a little differently. I, my item placements could have been a lot different. So easily, this game, I probably could have gotten second, but first might have been a little more difficult. All right, we are off into the last game now. If you guys made it through this far already, let me know down in the comments below. Type in maybe what rank you are, and just so I know who you are, who watched all the way through. Um, but here we started with a chain vest. Chain vest, pretty solid overall. You guys know how I like tank items early on in the game. And then we get a Nectron, another tank item. So as long as we get some sort of damage item here to complement this, we should be good to go for this game. So we grab a tier. That one's pretty good. Do we want to build Protector's Vow or Gargoyle's Stone Plate? It really depends on whether the comp you're going has one tank or a couple of tanks. If you have a couple of tanks, then obviously Protector's Vow is going to be a little better. If you only have one tank, obviously Gargoyle's Stone Plate is going to be a lot better. And this game is the Diamond game, so... As you guys can see already, as we went up through every game, the players have been getting better. Like for example, last game during stage four, a bunch of people had two star four costs. Whereas in the beginning, when we were facing like the iron, gold, silver and gold players, uh, they didn't quite have that many powerful upgrades. So the players do improve a lot as they move on. This augment choice is a little weird. So swift shot, if you want to force swift shots, electro charge is good for tanks. But I like Guardian a lot for wind streaking, especially since we already have a pair of Leonas. It could lead to a lot of good things in the future. If you want to play Super Flex, then obviously Electro Charge is better. But I think for the state of the game right now, Guardian and Electro Charge kind of do the same thing. They're both good with tanks, but one of them gives us an extra unit and a bit of gold, whereas Electro Charge is really just like a pure damage booster. But I feel like this is slightly better for what we have right now. But yeah, as I was saying before, once you get to Diamond, pretty much everyone here at least has like read a couple guides or maybe watched a couple guides. Uh, whether they're using them in every single game is a different question, but most people are like much more familiar with the meta. You might have to play meta compositions at this point in the game. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but in the last game, there are a bunch of like those Aphelios players, which is really popular right now. Essentially, like the people around this elo, they're more so paying attention to like the happenings of the game. Um, I'm not saying you have to do that to get to diamond, but it definitely does help a lot. Uh, if not, your fundamentals just have to be a lot better. Fundamentals as in like knowing when to level, knowing when to roll, knowing when to slam items, when not to slam items. I guess just like being good at the game. So here we get a random Zaya, Zyra 2, which is... Very interesting. I wish it was Zaya 2. I accidentally said Zaya 2, but it's a Zyra 2. We'll take it. So it's weird because Zyra doesn't have any synergies with Guardians, but that's okay as you guys will find out in a little bit. Because in the early game, you just need tanks and damage dealers. And Zyra, while she isn't the best damage dealer, since I got her to start for free, she's going to be giving a lot of utility and like value to my team, obviously. Uh, just because I already have the front line taken care of. So this is actually a really good upgrade, even though it seems a little random. Keep in mind, not all upgrades are that great, though. Sometimes there are some three cost two stars you can get, which really don't help your team at all, and it ends up being a waste of money. But Zyra in this situation is good because one, a CC unit is good in like most comps, and two, 
I have three frontline units already, so my fourth unit pretty much has to be a backliner. So it makes a lot of sense just to go for her. And I have a tier here, so I could definitely go for some AP item to try to like get a streak going in my mid game to bring me to like level nine later on. This guy's the Lagoon player with Cannoneers. I want to see more Zeri build. Zeri seems really cool as a concept to me, but people have not made her work yet. Look at Zyra hitting everyone in the back line. That's really nice. She counters a lot of the Swift Shot and Cannoneer comps because everyone's lined up in the back and Zyra hits whatever line the most units are in. And sometimes that just happens to work out really well in your favor. Are we able to win the auto attack war? We are. So we have like a mini streak we could probably build up. Maybe we could four streak into neutrals. So we have the tier Archangels or Spear Shojin would be the ideal choice here. We did get a little lucky. You may notice on the right hand side, two players are 94 health, but we're able to pick before him. It's just a coin flip at that point. Uh, but we're going to get probably, I wanted the Shojin, but I guess we'll get the Archangels. If you couldn't get either of those, Static Shiv would be a really good option as well to win streak. So we'll level up here. Uh, we'll drop in Kaisa. I guess Kaisa can hold it for now. We might end up playing this Zyra later on. Maybe we don't want the item stuck on her, but it's fine what we're doing right now. I did up, I did end up selling it and putting in Silas. I'm actually not sure if that's better in, in hindsight. I know Zyra's two-starred. But I, I don't think the Silas brings that much to the table either. Neither does Kaisa, so I guess they're both equally mediocre. Wow, we're actually able to win this one. It did not look good in the beginning. But I guess as we get got stacks of the Archangel, she ended up doing more damage later on. And nice. 929. Dude, that's all Archangel staff. It's so crazy what that item can do if your team can stall it out. We also have like four guardians, so obviously that's super tanky, right? So any stacking item like Rage Blade, Titan's Resolve, or Archangel Staff is gonna be insane for you. So I ended up selling the Leona and playing the Nasus because I wanna swap the item over onto Zack because he's my two starred. Whenever you have an upgraded unit, you generally wanna try to put items on them because they're gonna make the most of it because items are kind of like a multiplier. So if your base stats are higher, Multiplication obviously makes the end number higher if the base stats are higher. Uh, this guy's going Cannoneer, Cybernetic Implants with Last Whisper, so he's going some sort of AD comp. Doesn't have to be Cannoneers, but probably something maybe like Warriors, maybe Swift Shot. But man, Zyra just makes such good work of that back line. What this build does, it, it punishes a lot of the like aura compositions, because a lot of those people either stack everyone in the front or back. And yeah, it's just like one of the few units that can actually counteract that. There's a Varus, don't really need that. He could kind of use Archangel, so if we get a random two-star Varus, I guess we could play it, but I'm not banking on it. Uh, what's our item? Sword? Okay, so that could be a Spear of Shojin or a Giant Slayer. When you're in this position where you got a bunch of upgrades, but they're kind of like random, don't really synergize that much. What you can consider is going for like a fast nine, especially since we have very specific items right now. We have one tank item, but we also have Archangel Staff and half a Spear of Shojin. So that is screaming Aoshin to me because Aoshin's perfect items are like Archangels and Spear of Shojin. And then for tanks, you could use either Idis, which we have the Guardian Heart for, which buffs him up. Or we could play Terra, both of them are great options, and Gargoyle Stoneplate, amazing item for solo tank teams, which is generally what Idis is. So we have like a great start for that right now. So if we get something like late game specialist as an augment, that's definitely something you want because we're leaning more towards a fast nine here. We don't have to fast nine, we'll see what our life total is at, but let's say we're in stage four one, we're still at like above 80 health probably don't want to level up and roll down at level 7 right away. You want to maybe fast 8 and maybe not even roll at 8 and then go level 9 and just try to get some random dragon team. So stand united, battle mage, or second win. Second win could be useful. I do have a pretty tanky team so I'm almost guaranteed to get the second win proc off. Battle mage, kind of useless. And then what was the last option? Stand united. It could be stand united. I don't have that many synergies activated right now. Second win is probably a little safer to take because it's a little more flexible, especially since I don't 
100% know what I'm playing quite yet. We get the Kai'Sa in for Lagoon, and we have the Mystic from Seraphine and Rakan right now. It was stage 3 too, that's generally whenever I level up to level 6. I think I did that in most of the games we looked at today. Uh, again, 3 units in the bag, Zyra snipes them, holy cow. Jeweled Gauntlet isn't a bad item on Zyra either, because sometimes the random crit can get the a lot of units in the back. Sometimes without it, you can't really kill them. It takes like two or three rotations in order to kill them, but uh, that's why the spell crit can sometimes be a big buff to her, because it's kind of rare that she one taps people. I think it's just because his were not upgraded units, and he has no defensive stats either. Okay, there's another Seraphine. We don't really need the Zac. Uh, I guess we just chill. I guess you could play Zeri over Kaisa. I'm really not sure which one's better. I don't really think it matters because they don't really bring much to my team. Uh, this person... Throw the Hunt Electro Charge, so he's pretty flexible. He's not upgraded at all, though, so we should definitely win this. Oh man, Rakan's such a good unit. He's just AoE CC. He's really tanky. And he's a Rage Wing, like, which means you could play Zaya with him. And he's a Mystic. Oh, wow. Rakan is definitely, like, probably the best tank unit in the set because he's a three cost. Like, three cost, you don't expect that much as, like, a main tank. Obviously, like, four cost units are tankier, but for, like, bang for your buck, he might be one of the best, I think, because he gives CC, he's decently tanky, and his synergies are, are really good. Uh, so what do we want here? We want Spear of Shoujin, so we want a tier. So the Nunu, if we can. If not, we grab the Rel. If you want to be a little more flexible, you could build the Giant Slayer. But since we're on a win streak here, I think we'd rather have the Spear of Shoujin because that's going to give me more of an immediate power spike, which gives me more health, gives me more gold, so I could hit level 9 much easier. We're leveling up to level 7 because, again, whenever you could keep above 30 gold, generally a good idea to level up and do that. So this person's going, he's similar build as me. He has the same items, but on Karma. Uh, oh, nice. We got enough gold to make interest from the Lagoon thing. It almost tricked me out. I thought we were running Astrals because I had the Varus on the bench and then it gave me two Astral units, which is funny. Yeah, holy cow. Our team is so tanky. We have the Guardian Shield, we have Second Wind, and we have Seraphine Shielding. It might be too much tankiness. I'd rather like have some damage if I could, but sometimes life doesn't work out that way. Knife's Edge and Thieves Gloves. Hmm. I wonder what build he's going for. His whole team is unupgraded, so we should win. We got a little up lucky in the upgrades this game. I will admit that, but you guys saw throughout this whole day, like some games we got lucky, some games we got unlucky. That's just the nature of TFT. Like you're not gonna be unlucky every single game, but at the same time, you're not going to be lucky every single game either. So you have to kind of make the best of both worlds. It's like poker, uh, not so much like chess. You know how this game, Teamfight Tactics, is called like a auto chess or auto battler? But it's not really like chess. In chess, there's no luck. The only luck is at the beginning of whether you get black or white. But it's a lot more like poker because sometimes you get good rolls, sometimes you don't get good rolls, or in poker's case it's like draws or whatever. Uh, so it's definitely much more similar to that. We get a glove, a rod, ooh, jeweled gauntlet. <laughs> Weren't we talking about that item before? We get a reforger and a chain vest. You could reforge here. A lot of like high level players, like pro players, they tell me not to use my reforgers until like the very end because one guy said, dude, every item is good, so you don't need to reforge her until like you find every find out everything that you get. Um, so like after the treasure dragon is essentially when you would want to use it. Um, I've kind of had that stuck with stick with me the whole time. I do make like some exceptions to it, but there he does kind of have a point. There is a use to every item, even if you're playing like a comp that generally doesn't use a specific component. Um, there usually is like at least some random weird way you could use it on wow that twitch lived with like one hp holy cow but this dude has no damage so i think we're fine zyra gets her first cast off so quickly almost too quickly because then she doesn't kill them if she casted maybe like a couple seconds later she might have killed that twitch because of the archangel's staff stacking up oh no don't tell me this person wins i can't kill the zyra missed I can't kill the siphon. 
<laughs> I guess there goes our streak. We could have rolled a bit, but again, we're a high health, so I'm not going to roll. Evoker Crest. It would be interesting. I think it's Celestial, though. The reason why is because we have mana regen, we have damage, we have two damage items. So if we do get an Aeoshin, you want the Celestial Blessing to kind of have him lifesteal all the way back up. Oh, Deja would be a good replacement for Zyra. We almost have two-star Hecarim. There's Nunu, so we could play Deja right now. Oh, Soam's interesting, but we don't have mages. You can't really play Soam without mages. But I decide to do it anyways. This is 100% a mistake. I should just play Deja here. Unless I could put in two mages, which I'm too slow to do. Okay, thank god I did not make that mistake. I know we saw some other mages, and obviously buy the champion before you put on items, because you could put on items right as the fight starts, but you can't buy champions. Um, slight mistake there, but I was panicking with like just a couple seconds left in the turn. Um, yeah, you don't want to play Soam without mages, because Soam casts, gets like a bonus cast every four casts or something like that. So you want to cast as often as possible with Soam, and without mages, he's pretty much half as effective, so it's just a big no-no. So Deja, 100% better here. I don't even know what the Mirage is. Fr frankly, I don't even care because that's how much better he is without mages over Soam. Ooh, there's Soraka. Definitely could use her. So you guys notice how I was wind streaking this game, like where we had like a lot of health the whole time. If you ever get a Soraka at 100 health, it's really, really good because she insta kills a lot of units. So it's just something to keep in your back pocket whenever you're wind streaking a lot. It's funny how we're running Mirage and Guardian, but we don't have Leona. Because obviously she has both of those. But yeah, the Zyra served us well. We uh, we definitely took advantage of her. She provided like a wind streak for our team, and we barely use any synergies with her. We use Whispers maybe for like two fights or something like that. And that was a Silas 1 without Bruiser. That's how like effective she can be. Or like random units can be just as an item holder you don't have to like use them the whole time they just have to hold items you know wow that deja absolutely clutched it right there not that we needed it but it's still nice to have okay yasuo would be pretty good because he's a mirage and just a good legendary uh but i guess we w we have all our damage items so we want tank items and utility items at this point so we have the chain vest we could go for another gargoyle stone plate we could go for a sunfire cape we could go for a Titan's Resolve. Uh, if you're cringe, you could go for a Shroud. We could also do the Protector's Vow. So almost every item is good here. I think everything except for Rod builds an item that's useful for us, I think. We went over all the other ones, right? Yeah, I think so. Is this Kai'Sa 2 actually going to do anything for me? I really don't think so. I I'm debating... If just running, yeah, a random Soraka is better than this Lagoon thing. But maybe we, like, I'm obviously trolling a little bit. Maybe I want more Lagoon rewards. You need to look at the loot tables because there's, like, a specific reward at every threshold. So you could, like, know what you're going to get. Uh, so you have to play around that to know what reward you get. Uh, I probably was checking during that, during the game. Uh, so this guy's got a very powerful Graves. Two-starred, fully stacked Titans Resolve. I don't think we can kill him. Okay, I guess we crit him or whatever. Uh, so that's a little lucky there. But we actually can't kill the other people. Wow, he's got a Dragon Claw against my AP comp. I guess it wasn't a damage item. If it was a damage item, it would hurt even more. Okay, there's Deja too. So we shouldn't lose for like a very long time now. I mean, we did roll a bunch of gold at level 8. So it is like not unrealistic that we would get it. We didn't need to hit it because if you look at our health, we're at 80. So we could have lost like the next like two rounds, be at like 50 health and still be fine and then hit Deja during stage like 5-1 or something like that. So even though it's obviously really nice that we hit him right now, it wasn't required by any means. Man, he is really, uh, he is really sweeping everyone. Jeez. Okay, so we are in a very, very good spot because our full team is upgraded almost and we're at high health. 
Not much gold, but we could fix that through the treasure dragon. Giant Slayer is good for random legendaries. Dragon Claw is good for dragon comp. But Runons doesn't really do that much. You could keep this. I wouldn't be too disappointed because you could reforge the Runons. But I think this is what we're looking for here. Holy cow. We needed tank items. We got tank items. So it could be either Gargoyles or... What's the other one? Titan's Resolve? I think Titan's Resolve. Because I'm pretty sure we're going to be playing like Shivana or something like that. Uh, something that could really make you good use of the stacks. Maybe like a Yasuo can use it too. So a lot of people wonder, when do I go level 9? When do I stay level 8 and roll? Generally, people go level 9 only if their entire team is 2-starred. Obviously, if you have a 8-man team and you have a 1-star, like Karma, for example, let's say Karma fits in your comp, obviously don't roll to hit Karma 2. But if it's something like uh, you have a 1-star Nunu, maybe you have a 1-star Hecarim, you generally would want to hit that unit 2-star before you reach level 9, unless there's a very specific synergy you need to put in. Uh, that's kind of my rule of thumb there. So we're pretty much upgraded. We're missing like Soraka. Soraka's hard to get 2-star at level 8 because she's a legendary. But maybe we could get Rakan before we level up to level 9. But we are... 82 life so what you can do instead is just wait don't roll or level up and then wait till you're at around like 40 health and then see whether you natural more units or whether it's like worth it to or whether you accrued up enough or whether you saved up enough gold to reach level 9 uh, and still be able to roll a bit there because reaching level 9 without doing anything really is the biggest waste of gold in the entire world it's not even close. A lot of people make that mistake. I, I make that mistake a lot now still. What you want to do instead is go level 9 with gold in order to actually take advantage of it. Because getting one extra unit in the game isn't going to do that much. Most people drop in a random bard, for example, or a random Yasuo, or a random Soraka. Yeah, they're doing a little bit in the game, but they're not doing like that, that much, you know? Like, you spend 80 gold leveling up to level 9. Is 80 gold worth one Soraka? Probably not. So you want to make sure you actually get use of the improved odds of getting better champions before you do that. Now to give you an example of putting in like a random unit at level 9 where it would be worth it, maybe you really need to add a Shivana to your composition and you're running like a random unit at level 8 and you need to reach level 9 to replace that unit and put in the Shivana because you need two slots for a dragon, right? For like nine Rage Wing or whatever the Rage Wing or eight Rage Wing, I forget what the cutoffs are. Then yeah, it would be probably worth it to reach level nine. But if, if not, like then you would be better served waiting. So we get a dragon carousel. Chalice is okay. The Shivana is looking pretty juicy. Ao Shin, do we have an item remover? I don't think so. We could also go, oh, we could reforge it though. So you could just get Aoshin, reforge the redemption. Even though I want redemption on my tank, I would much prefer an item remover. But reforging also removes the item. And then just drop all the Deja items on him. That would be probably pretty decent. <sighs> Might be a little too early to swap the... Okay, Zizirod's not bad. Uh, I don't like that at all. I really don't like that at all. Two-star Deja... Probably better than one star Aoshin. Especially since I don't have any electric units. Why did I do what am I doing? I just sold two upgraded units for a level one Terra. Okay, I am trolling here, guys. I am I apologize profusely. Like that is I'm I'm literally griefing here. I am for sure gonna lose these next two rounds. See, the only way it would be worth it to sell those units is if I actually use the gold. But I'm not using the gold. I'm at 90 gold right now. After 50 gold, you don't get additional interest. So it's like, it's just not worth it, right? Like there's, I don't care that like Terra is tanking up like a beast this round. I'm pretty sure I would have won with the Deja because Deja would have wiped his team already. Okay, Aoshin did clutch it. Aoshin and Terra did clutch it. Don't get me wrong, but I think this is still weaker than the other board because like I just replaced four upgraded units or sorry 
three upgraded units, the Deja, the Zac, and someone else, for two one-star one units. Like, And then I did it again. I sold Nunu to put in Lee Sin. This does not look like a level 8 board. If someone rolled and got this board on stage 4-1, you would like partially be like laughing at them a little bit, right? Because you're like, dude, your team is... Um, like, well, what's with your team, right? Like, you're all one-starred. Because <laughs> normally when you roll on, like, early on in the game, or, like, at level 8, maybe at, like, 5-1, you're going to get, like, two-star Zaya, you're going to get two-star Deja, like what I had, and, like, a two-star Hecarim or something like that. But my, my whole team's one-starred. I... <laughs> There's no way this was better. Don't tell me Aoshin clutches it again. No way, right? Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the other team... I don't know if they would have beat this guy, but they would have fared a bit better. Okay, we are on to the next thing right now. We get a Edge of Night. Don't really care too much about that. We'll for sure be rolling down to zero because we are at level nine. I explained to you guys before why we need to roll at level nine. It's just like a lot of the benefit of the cost that you put in. There's a random Yasuo too. I guess I could run him. I do have Dragon Mancer. Uh, I'm hitting a lot of Yasuos, not enough Aoshins. I also don't have items for my Yasuo. Oh, there's an Aoshin. I can buy him. A little bit more. Nope, don't get it. I'll clean up my bench a bit. Uh, yeah, put the Edge of Night on him for sure. Oh, he moved. It's hard putting items on Yasuo because he dashes about. This guy's got the Shivana 1, Zaya 2. He has a pretty typical board, I would say. Maybe half the time they have a Shivana 2 at this point. Okay, we got rocked by him because our team's not upgraded. Um, I think I should sell Bard here. I like holding on to Rakan because he gives Shivana Rage Wing. He gives Idis uh, Guardian and he gives Shio Yu Mystic. So whenever you're running a dragon team, Rakan is a good person to have in your back pocket. Okay, there's the Aeotian 2. I also hit Soraka 2. I forgot when that happened. Um, I want to change the items over onto Yasuo. That's why I sold him like that. And I should be maybe solo frontlining my Terra. And maybe putting my Yasuo where the Soraka is. Because Yasuo is going to make much more use of the monolith buff than than Soraka will. So I, I should probably reposition. Like if I'm looking at it in hindsight. This guy's also dragons. It's not at the Aeotian though. He does have big friend though. Wow, his team is really good. He has the diamond hands. He has big friend. And he's got a two star uh, legendary dragon. But Two-star Aoshin with like pretty much perfect items. I, I'm 99% sure these are like close to perfect items. It's hard to beat, right? My one-star Terra with Dragon Claw. Oh, fun fact, guys, with Dragon Claw. If you did not know, Dragon Claw, the item that builds out of two Negatron cloaks, it has increased effects when put on a dragon. So it's like a little Easter egg. So do keep that in mind. By the way, if I get a two-star Idis, it's probably better than my one star monolith, so I'll, I'd replace that if I could. I drop in the bard. Why was I running the other person? Seraphine. I guess Seraphine's not bad. She's a mystic or something, right? I got Zephyr here. If he Zephyr'd my Aeotian, maybe I lose this, but he also had Shroud, so he didn't position. I can't blame him. I don't position either, but. Like, I'm also. Like normally higher rating, so I don't like need to rely on it. Okay, so we're able to make quick work of him here. Yeah, maybe he could have won if he Zephyred and Shrouded my Aeotian. It would have been closer at least. Who knows, maybe maybe we still win. We also have two-star Yasuo. Man, this Terra is like really, really tanky. I don't know if it's the items, because I've had 2-star Terra before, and sometimes my 2-star Terra with 3 tank items dies instantly. But maybe I didn't have these exact items. So Zeke's is really nice, same with the Chalice to buff up my Aoshin. I could also get a Yasuo item, like the QSS. All those got taken. Alright, I'll grab the QSS. Yeah, I guess we'll just, we'll just settle on this. 
sell this Olaf, put that on him. And we're not hitting this Bard or Lee Sin, are we? Or anything, any other upgrade. We could replace Soraka with someone random, but Soraka might... Oh, that's why Artera's living. Let's watch the Soraka heal and see how much it's healing Artera. Okay, so we swapped for the Zephyr, which is really nice. I guess we can't see this game because she got CC'd. Okay, she's about to cast. See what I mean? Soraka didn't cast this game, and my Terra died. I think Terra's only tanky because of my Soraka. We still won because we have Aoshin 2 and Yasuo 2. And I'm pretty sure maybe that's why Terra's so tanky. We get a new shop. We hit a Terra here. I guess we could sell, yeah, the extra Yasuo roll a bit. Man, we still have not hit, like, Idis 2 or something like that. Okay, I guess it's time to say goodbye to Idis. We hit a lot of Ao Shins. Oh, that's a Lee Sin too I could do. I should sell Idis and buy that. Do I not see this? Am I blind? I am blind. Sometimes, like, just dealing with positioning is more important than getting a random upgrade that isn't key. Like, if it's getting Ao Shin 2 and I forgot to buy that in my shop, then obviously it's a big mistake. But if it's just a Lee Sin, Lee Sin isn't critical in this composition I'm running right now. It, sometimes it's more important to just have better positioning. For example, this guy at Zephyr, if my Aeotian gets zephyr that's pretty much most of my team. See, look, Soraka casted, it's just completely carrying the uh, the Terra. It's only because the Terra is one star that I need this. If Terra was two star, then it wouldn't be an issue. All right, my ghost is finishing this other guy. Aeotian is literally just cooming everywhere for the win. Holy cow. And then Yasuo should finish this. All right, that is how to get to diamonds in six games. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. There's like a good variety of the games and hopefully you guys learned something. This game, we did really well with transferring our item holders from first the Zyra, then the Deja, then the Aoshin. We swapped to Aoshin a little early, like I said multiple times already in the video. Um, but hopefully in all the games you learned at least a little something you could change about your play. And yeah, I'll be coming up with another one of these compilations in the future. I'm going to do one like only Astral, only Reroll, stuff like that. Um, but this one is kind of like the general one, so it fits with like most different play styles. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that and I'll see you all later. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.